Yeah, they wish and they wish and they wish and they wish and they wishing on me. <laughs> it's Tony time, bitch. I don't care who's fucking with me. Staying away from Tiramisu's a struggle for Khabib. You don't wanna fight, you wanna cuddle with me. My elbows are nice yeah, and I'ma cut you with these. I don't really give a fuck who's with me. If this fat fuck will make way to big mystery. If you were smart, then you would probably pick me. To submit Habib at UFC 223 To submit Pettis at UFC 229 Tony time Tony time I knock out sometimes I choke I might be the lightweight goat If my leg didn't get broke Would've probably be Khabib Then moved up and fought with Lee Either wait for GSP Wanna mess with me, Tony time, Tony time. Be careful, Valentina. They're saying you're pretty confident, but hearing MMA I ain't the one that you want a problem with, so stop it, bitch. Or you wanna gon' have to drop a bitch. I ain't about to lose and go out like my homegirl Rhonda did. But speaking of losing, how about you and Amanda Nunes? She beat you twice, and for this fight, she's teaching I'm the student, never truant. Cause I really wanna beat you, I'ma do it when I do. Please don't go to the media with excuses. I know you beat me in Muay Thai, but this is different. This is more than throwing punches, knees and kicks and clinching this is more like war these motherfucking chicks is vicious and anything goes i don't fear any of these hoes not even rose tatiana just can drudge or cyborg if you're trying to frighten me then you should try more when we fight we'll get it popping like july 4th at ufc 231 you're gonna die whore. it's the fight game that i adore I gave up everything to fight these wars To become the greatest fighter in the world So I hope you get what you're paying for Be careful with me Or is this, is this full-time MMA now? Uh, I love full-time MMA right now Full-time MMA, MMA. Nobody fucking with me, yeah. I'm about to go be steep eight, yeah. Moving up to heavyweight, yeah. And I am destined to be great, yeah. And if you didn't know, they call me DC. And there's no one that you know that can beat me, yeah. I fought John Jones, but was he clean? I don't think so. What's in that PP? Steroids, cocaine, probably weed. Testosterone, dick pills, and speed. And shrooms, and pills, and codeine. Goddamn, John turned into a dope fiend. And Steve Bay's about to turn into a folding chair. When I fold him up, I'ma win two belts and hold him up. On my champ, champ shit, Connor knows what's up, little bitch. I done did a lot of drugs in my day, yeah I said it, but I'm still gonna kick your ass, Gustafson, I hope you ready when I got into the crash, I ain't know the bitch was pregnant, but they treat me like a murderer, so motherfucker critic, bitch I'm ready to fight, and we can fight till the death, I'll hit your ass with the right, then with the right and the left, then kick you right in the chest, and have you fighting for breath, and then I'll turn the pressure up when you would try to get rest, leave you no time to adjust, Daniel I'm coming for the title, so quit hiding your necks, because I'm right at your neck yeah you can try and fight lesnar but when you fight him what's next that's right i'm the best at ufc 232 i'll get my title instead this is sean o'malley and you're watching full-time mma don't be a bagel biting bagel bitch boy bagel <laughs> bitch back <laughs> what is going on full-time family you guys know what time it is if you don't, you're about to. It is time for PFL's 
2018 World Championships. There's going to be six champions crowned, all the finalists of the PFL um, tournament title tournament. If you recall, they all had to fight twice in one night. Um, PFL's got a really dope system now. I really like it. They have a regular season, then they have the playoffs. And the playoffs is, is a title tournament. And after you make it through the first round, and it's, you, if you know what like March Madness is or just any sort of bracket tournament, after you make it through the first round, well, to get to the finals, you have to fight again in the semifinals that same night. And this is the playoffs. And the first round is only a two-round fight. and But it's really cool, the whole scoring in order to get to the playoffs. Like throughout the season, you earn points determined on um, – if you knock some, if you get the finish, you know, if when you get the finish, like if you just beat somebody in the regular season with unanimous decision, um, you get three points. If you beat them with a knockout in the first round, you get six points. A knockout in the second round or submission, you get five points. So, and then you make it to the tournament. So it's a really cool little system. And so tonight, it's going to be the finals. These people all made it to the finals. They won two fights in one night. They made it to the playoffs. And tonight they're going to be fighting to become PFL's inaugural tournament in their respective division, as well as fighting for a million dollars. And then a cherry on top. Two-time, two-time, two-time Olympic gold medalist Kayla Harrison's going to be disarming some woman tonight. Um, in her third pro fight, can't wait for that. She's gonna be taking on um the the girl's name is Moriel the Machine. Uh, it's, it's Moriel Charneski, I believe. It's actually a pretty good fight. You know, a lot of people are gonna say, "Oh, losing record," like they did after her first pro fight. Even though this girl has seven pro fights, but when she fought Josette Cotton, you couldn't make that argument. And also, also. Just for the Harrison haters that you know are going to be swarming and talking about Moriel Sharneski's record, um, <clears throat> I want to pull that up because it's actually a little more impressive than you might think. Moriel Sharneski. I mean, she's still losing an arm tonight regardless of how impressive her record is. But she's only 29 years old, and yes, wait, this is not, oh yeah, there she is, there she is. She's only 29 years old. She's got... Three pro wins and four losses, right? So you're like, oh, she's only three and four. Well, look at all these amateur fights. This girl's experienced. This is an experienced girl here. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven amateur fights, seven pro fights. So all in all, this girl has eighteen fights experience. Take it on Kayla Harrison, who's fighting her third pro fight. So just for the for the doubters and the critics out there, keep in mind this girl's not, you know, she she's actually got a lot of amateur experience as well. So we'll we'll see how this goes. But either way, like I said, she could be three and four, she could be eight and two, like Josette Cotton. Still got a good chance of getting disarmed tonight, taking on Kayla Harrison. So we'll see how that goes. I, th I think that happens first. I think that's gonna be the first fight of the night. Should be coming up soon, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> um and then We'll be on to all the inaugural title fights. And the winners win a million dollars um, and the, their respective belt. And I'm sure everyone wants the million dollars more than they want the belt. But as far as fighters are concerned, it's going to be funny. People are going to be like, oh, I want a million dollars. I'm retiring. <laughs> you guys can keep the belt. I'll take the million. <laughs> no, that'd be crazy. Um, so, yeah, these are the fights we got coming up. Um, middleweight, we got Luis Taylor versus Abus Magomedov. We've got Lance Palmer taking on Steven Seiler at featherweight. We've got Nathan Schulte taking on Rashid Magomedov at lightweight. Vinny Magalhaes taking on Sean O'Connell at light heavyweight. And then we've got Felipe Lins versus Josh Copeland at heavyweight. And I think the feature bout is their welterweight fight between Ray Cooper III and Magomed, Magomed Kerry Move. So, We've got some good fights coming up. All of these title fights, winners win a million bucks. And, of course, um, the special event they're calling it is Kayla Harrison's third pro fight. And, of course, it's New Year's Eve, so the fights are early enough to where everyone can still get to their festivities after they watch some good MMA. Maybe it'll... <laughs> Maybe that will uh, people will get their aggression out watching some MMA before they go out tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Make for a better night. Um, so yeah. With that being said, man, looking forward to these fights. It looks like 
um, they're in the octagon. Someone's about to be walking out. I don't know exactly who it is, but I'm ready. Got the stream on deck. I got to get the fight clock going for the first fight. We'll see which one, which fights first, but we'll keep this one on the screen for now. Let's pull up the chat as well. Full-time family in the building. CFR Sports, what's going on, brother? Make sure you guys check out CFR Sports. Check out his channel. Alan Clark, play Tony Time, please. We did at the beginning of the show. We did, we did. Hit rewind. Salam from Dagestan. What website can I watch a bus fight? I got your back, bro. I got your back. Once a mod gets in here, if you can, copy this and give it to anyone that needs it. That can't find this um, on the internet because it's not on Red MMA stream. Which had to get search like two more words. <laughs> All right, so here it is. Luis Taylor versus A Bus Muggle Madoff is about to fight. Okay, here's the A Bus fight for you. I like PFL. I'm intrigued for tonight. Says Pinhead. Yeah, I do too, man. I do too. Gary Spartan says this should be good. Valentin T. Pico Graham. All right. So let me make sure you guys can't hear the fight so I can unmute it. Yep. All right. We're good there. And we're going to be watching, I believe, A. Bus Muggle Madoff taking on Luis Taylor first. Middleweights. Luis Taylor's 39 years old, but this dude's a beast, man. He made it all the way to the finals, won two rounds and one two fights in one night. But this is A Bus Michael Madoff we're talking about here. Both these guys went 3-0-1 through PFL. To make it to here through through the finals, through the playoffs. A Bus Michael Madoff got twenty six pro fights. Louis Taylor, who is 11 years his elder, only has 22. So he's younger, more experienced. It's going to be a tough fight for Louis Taylor, but he made it here. So he's definitely not one to count out. Going through Louis Taylor's, giving a little rundown on him, coming from Chicago. was a collegiate wrestler <clears throat> before becoming an MMA fighter. So this is going to be the first fight of the night. Okay, okay. That was good because I was thinking, man, if the if, if the um, Taylor Harrison fight is too early, that's really the one I'm waiting to see. That wouldn't be very smart because, you know, if everyone started, like, leaving after the Kayla Harrison fight, <laughs> you got to move that a little later. Playtime family, Mr. Din Vader in the building, Jay Skills, yo, happy New Year's, everyone, hell yeah, what are you guys doing tonight, anybody doing anything crazy, I'm not, I'm chilling, I'm lighting some fireworks with the nieces and nephews, I ain't, I ain't got shit playing, my girl's at work till about 9.30, Mr. Din Vader says Taylor's too black to win, what, is that like racist or... Are you talking about, like, on the judges' scorecards or something? See if our sport says, word up, 2019 deep out. It's the struggle in it, fam, says Mr. Invader. We got Boss rooting on the commentary. What network? This is on um, CBS Sports or NBC Sports. NBC Sports. NBC Sports. Remove Lizard says, looking forward to the Kayla fight. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. First fight of the night. Yo, all of these fights have a lot on the line. I'm talking a million dollars. You know how much a million dollars is for a fighter? There's literally UFC champions that don't make a million dollars. There's probably two Bellator fighters that make a million dollars after pay-per-views, their rare pay-per-view. Like, a million dollars is so much for a fight for these dudes. Like, seriously. That's, that's fucking, that's really dope. Now, the 
Can they pay it? Will they pay it? Hopefully. But that's a lot. I'm sounding real low today. Let's see if I can fix that. Sounds. Recording. Boom. That's better now, huh? Is it too loud? Let me know if it's too loud. Thanks for letting me know, CFR Sports. Yo, full time, I won $50 betting against you on last UFC. Oh, shit. What was the last UFC and what was betting against me? Because we won the last UFC. We didn't, and we didn't bet on um, UFC 232. So you're talking about what? Kevin Lee versus Ally Quinta? Let's say, because uh, my boy Stam and MC threw $5 at the bankroll at. Ally Quinta that night, and we bet on Edson Barboza. Son, what a sick KO, says Jay Skills. Wait, are you way ahead of me on the fights? Because they're still announcing the fights on my screen. Here is a boss, Mago Middle. Dan Mergliata, referee in charge. Here's your cut, says Mr. Dinvader. Yo, thank you for the two years in the super chat. Much appreciated. But if you bet against me, how do I get a cut? <laughs> Yo, thank you again for that two in the super chat. Woo! All right, here we go. Fight's on. Outside leg kick landed by A-Bus Mago Madoff. Louis Taylor lands an inside low kick. Comes forward, lands a left. Oh, my God. Right hand while he's down. Holy shit. Louis Taylor knocks out A-Bus Mago Madoff in the first round. Oh my. This dude just cleaned up A bus. Left hook does it. Caught A bus with the left hook that sent him down. Head might have hit the ground. Came down and hit him with one good one for good measure, and it was over. 39 year old Louis Taylor just knocked out A bus Michael Madoff in the first round. Wins a million dollars. Holy flying, flipping flapjacks. Holy smokes. 39 years old just knocked out A Bus Mago made off with the left hook, sent him down. Wow. That was quick. Somebody was way ahead. They said that. What a KO. Somebody seen that shit way ahead of me. It was a leaping left hook. Landed right on the button. Abus landed the outside leg kick. Louise Taylor landed the inside leg kick. So, oh, leaping left hook. Oh, A bus went down, just straight down. One more shot. It was over. First round KO. Oh, yeah. Yikes. <laughs> That was a fucking crazy dog. A bus Mago made off down in the first round. Yo, that's the new middleweight champion for PFL. Louis Taylor's PFL's new middleweight champion. And now, well, not after taxes, he's not a millionaire, but he wins a million dollars. Now, I'm sure next week, no, I'm not going to say I'm sure, but a lot of times, man, a lot of organizations, they don't have a lot of money. 
outside, you know, a lot of these smaller organizations. Now, PFL's on NBC and stuff like that. Hopefully, you know, they're whoever's back. In, I think they're good. You know, they got, like, Kevin Hart on their damn main screen, and they got some backers and stuff like that. So, I think PFL's good. They were also, if you, you know, they, the PFL was the World Series of Fighting rebranded, so they already had some good fighters. They've got some good fighters, but, yeah, hopefully there's no issues with that. But, that was unexpected, for sure. Louis Taylor, first round knockout. Wonder what fight is next. We still got the featherweights. We still got the lightweights. If they go in this order, the next would be the featherweights. Lance Palmer versus Steven Seiler. Holy smokes. Happy New Year's to my UK fam, says Mr. Invader. Yes, sir. Remove Lizard says Savage. What the fuck? 36 seconds, $1 million. Not bad, says J Skills. Yo, that sounds pretty nice. 36 seconds, $1 million. No, there's a lot more time, you know, in the lead up to the fight. You had to make it there to the, win the playoffs. But no, that does sound pretty nice. I got it live full time. I won't spoil it in future fights. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm watching the stream, so it's a little delayed. I got the link with the USA advertisements. Them funny, says CFR Sports. <laughs> Mr. Jim Vader says, I, I'd love to say here a while full time ignores the chat, but I got people to be with. Have fun, playtime family. Wow, full time ignores the chat. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Here we go. They're gonna look at some shit, some cage dynamics. I don't know what the hell that is. Louise Taylor about to be announced officially as the winner of the official decision. Hopefully, my stream doesn't mess up. Restart it. Bro, there's only one good stream, unless one of you guys found another one. Are you guys using the same one as me? Is anybody watching this on a stream? If so, I might need a new one, because it's not on Reddit MMA streams. Let's see. Refresh it one more time, and if not, we will see what we got. Let's try and find another one. CFR Sports, what link you got? Do you have the link that I had earlier in the chat? Mr. Jim Vader said, not full time, but for real, I remember that time you told me Till was going to beat Woodley. What the hell are you talking about, Mr. Jim Vader? You don't remember anything correct. By the way, full-time MMA, did you see JFG doing a UFC companion last night? Well, who is JFG? JFG. Boiled my blood, bro. I don't know who JFG is. But I don't care who does a damn fight companion. I had him out for real this time. All right, Mr. Dim Vader. All right. Stream down. See if we can fix it or get a new one. Yep, there we are. You got the million dollar check. Training with Bilal Muhammad. Louis Taylor, man. Million dollar check. Belt on his shoulder. Luis Taylor, one million dollars from the Professional Fight League. Thirty-six second first round knockout. Leaping left hook. One shot follow up, and it was over. Let's get that off of here. Maybe that might. Yeah, that's right.
He said, you got to beat this old line before you can take my pack. Yo. Man. Abus Mago Madoff wasn't able to utilize any of his wrestling or... Before getting knocked out. Luis Taylor's said... I don't need a nice car. I just need to make sure my family's good. My daughter's school is paid for now. First million dollar winner, Louis Taylor. Ah. Louis Taylor getting that W. First million dollar winner, PFL's new middleweight champion. That's only one turn title winner and million dollar winner. First of the night. They're going to do this again next week. They're going to have the women's lightweight as well. So I wonder if that means they'll only have, like, one title fight per year. Or if throughout the year, while Louis Taylor fights, he'll be defending his belt. It'll be interesting to see how they play that out in their next season, in their next year. I think next we're going to be watching, yep, Steven Seiler versus Lance Palmer. Oh, shit, are they going to have Kayla Harrison as the main event? That's going to be crazy. Fuck it, I'm down. I got a cotton mouth like a motherfucker. I'm about to have to go grab a drink real quick. John Francis Garipi, Google it. I'm definitely not Googling that. I got no clue who that is. Billy Parnell says, well, can I watch the fight? Ever loves hot wings says TFR Sports. Is it true you blocked Trollbuster? What? Ever loves hot wings says MMA. Did you see the Floyd fight, bro? I, well, I was on YouTube today and I, it just popped up. I was like, what? That shit already happened. I definitely watched that. Did you guys watch that? CFR Sports. Did you hear you? No, 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 no. Ever loves hot wings. It's not CFR Sports that blocked Trollbuster. It was it was CSH Combat Sports who blocked Trollbuster. He was on a blocking spree, man. Coach was on a blocking spree. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that was coming in and kind of repping Nunes or or he felt like was being disrespectful towards Cyborg, he was blocking that night. He's a big, you know, that's Cyborg Nation over there. So not the place to go to um, if, if you know you're going to disrespect Cyborg or try and troll him in, at that time. So a lot of people got blocked. You know, I can't unblock you. I wouldn't have blocked you. You know what it is, what it is. But it wasn't CFR Sports, bro. Yeah, Ever Loves Hot Wings. It, was not, it wasn't Coach. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't CFR Sports, bro. And Coach unblocked Jay Skills. I'm sure he would unblock Trollbuster. That was just, you know, imagine your favorite fighter or something like losing in that fashion. And people showing up on your shit. You know, it's like going to a John Jones. That's what that's the way I equated it. It's kinda like going to a John Jones um it's kinda like going to a John Jones fan page and calling him a cokehead or, or saying he's on steroids. You're probably gonna get blocked. But some people said that they were just giving Amanda Nunes her props. If that's the case, I really don't think coach would block people just for giving Amanda Nunes her props. I would hope not, but yeah, I I, I don't I got no control over that. <clears throat> that intermission was long, says CFR Sports. Yeah, they probably didn't expect the uh, first round knockout. You know, gave a little more commercial time. Ever loves hot wings. No disrespect, brother. Dan Boone says, yo, my bro, Matt Proben got a fight in Bellator 2519 in Connecticut, USA. Yo, congrats to Matt Proben. Fighting Bellator on February 5th. I don't know where UFC, when UFC Wichita is, but I'm telling you right now, that's going to be my first live event ever. 
I can't fucking wait. I don't know who the main event is, and if I'm being 100% honest, I don't care who the main event is. I don't care who's on the undercard, because I'm going to be watching it live. Yeah, Lance Palmer versus Steven Styler coming up next. I'm about to roll my weed, but I'm rolling skimps. Hey, hey. Yeah, I'm going to re redo this a little bit, man, because uh, I need to. Ever loves hot wings to see if our sports. My apology, brother. I meant no disrespect. I am sorry. Yeah, simple common, little mistake there. Mistake. Are you going to show the fight, says Vindex 2? No, but we can point you in the right direction. You can't show fights on YouTube, uh, especially on NBC Sports. It's NBC Sports broadcast. It's on free TV, but they will copy strike you. You will get shut down. Your YouTube channel will get shut down if you show the fights. But I can't wait. Wait, what in the fuck? Why does this stream say MMA live panel and not like, or does it? If so, that's going to be crazy. Does her title say MMA? Okay, no, don't. Okay, okay. All right, got a little intermission still going on. You guys might be ahead of me on the fights because if you're watching it live on your TV, there's a little delay on my stream, so um, I'm not going to be seeing the fights. You'll see the results before me, so whenever the fights are on, I'm not going to be looking at the chat so it don't get spoiled and I can like actually watch it and react to it, but I will be watching the chat throughout and during all the intermissions. Here we go. We are three, I mean, seven subscribers away from 8,100 full time family. If you haven't yet, I'm sure most of you have because we don't really reach new people anymore. Hit that subscribe button, be much appreciated. Also, if you haven't finished biting your bagels, smash that thumbs up button like your middle name is Habib. Like your middle name is Habib. All right, guys, I'm about to get grab grab me a drink before I spark this because uh, I need something to drink. I'm already thirsty. So in the meantime, in between time, we're gonna play Tony time. Tony time. All right, let me mute the fights. By the time I come back, the fights will be on, I'm sure. UFC Yanko Vich. Why am I not seeing all the chat right here? Hmm. Let me check this out. There we are. Okay. Now I'm seeing the chat. Like up, folks, says Leon Dubson. Yeah, he would, says Lolita Davidich. Nah, sorry, talking about Risen. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to go pour me a drink, guys, and I'll catch up on the chat, and hopefully the next fight will be started. What are we about to play? Tony time? Sounds good. BRB. Yeah, they wish, and 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 they me. Jet flag! Son of a gun! And I'm having a hard time! It's Tony time, but y'all don't care who's fucking with me. Staying away from Tiramisu's a struggle for Khabib. You don't want to fight, you want to cuddle with me. My elbows are knives, and I'ma cut you with these. I don't really give a fuck who's with me. If this fat fuck will make way to big mystery. If you were smart, then you would probably pick me. To submit Habib at UFC 223. To submit Pettis at UFC 229. Tony time. Tony time. I knock out sometimes I choke. I might be the lightweight goat. If my leg didn't get broke. 
would have probably be Khabib. Then moved up and fought with Lee. Either wait for GSP. You don't want to mess with me. Tony time. Tony time. I knock out sometimes I choke. I might be the lightweight goat. If my leg didn't get broke. Would have probably be Khabib. At UFC 223. Alrighty. Then. Full time family. Either wait for GSP. We are back. It's about time for Lance Palmer or Steven Seiler for one million dollars. Why am I putting this on? It's not my microphone. No, that was my microphone. I'm looking for my other headphones. Tell F. All right, I'm back. To the chat. Holy flying flipper flapjack. Had Bari hard well with the seven dollars in the super chat. Oh my god, Cad Bari. Thank you so much. Yo, no, for real. That's much appreciated. Back to the chat. Let me make sure the fight's not on while I'm slipping. Oh wait. No, yeah, I think that's a replay. That's not current fight right now. I gotta hit refresh on my fights. Because my stream is lagging. Alright, it's not on, I don't think. Okay, here we go. Back to the chit-chit-chit-chat. Everlo's Hot Wings. CFR Sports. Vindex 2. Point me, says Billy Parnell. We got your back. We got your back. Boom. Link for the fight. Kai Pooney. Got your back. Tay-Tay Brown. Happy New Year, dear. Thank you very much, Tay Tay Brown. Happy New Year's to you. Hope you have a uh, blessed 2019 and hope your 2018 went well as well. CFR Sports, <coughs> VIP League. Google it. Yo, I might need VIP League if they're working because my stream is shit in the bed right now. My stream is um definitely lacking. Pull these. Up. All right, here we go. These guys are in the cage. Right now. Okay, yeah, I need, hey, what's the VIP League link? That's what I need. We appreciate you every day, bro. Talk town love. Yo, Cadbury Hardwell, I appreciate you guys every day, man. It's cool to have some people to talk MMA with. Tay Tay Brown says LM8. Oh. Tony, time. Eight. They're in the ring. I need that VIP League link. Because they're still announcing it. It's lagging. I'm just probably way behind right now. I'm going to look at VIP League. VIP League. UFC or just fighting? Let's see. There we go. PFL. Okay. There we go, VIP League. Oh, it looks like they're fighting already. We might have a good link. Oh, yeah. All right. Actually, I think the other one was just a little better because it was around the same time and it's bigger. Here we go. All right, I'm going to get the clock up for this fight, guys. So commentary is going to be lacking for about the first minute of the fight while I get this situated fight clock. <clears throat> just so we'll have it for the important fights for sure. All right, we need it to be. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see where this is. Where's the fight clock? There it is.
I'm going to show which round. Oh, yeah, 105 right there. All right. Three minutes and 43 seconds left in the round. Oh, there we go. All right. <clears throat> Time to get underway. All right, nice little inside leg kick there from Lance Palmer. I need my lighter. Ooh, Lance Palmer misses on that left hook there. Gets tagged with a little um, counter left hand from Steven Seiler. Stream lagging. Unfortunate. Let's see if we can get this out of here. Boom, close some shit out maybe. I don't got much up. All right, refresh. Man, I hope my, uh, let me check the other stream, because I can't be lagging during the Kayla Harrison fight. I know that much. Let's see, do, 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 47, nope. VIP League, we're going back to VIP League. F it. Got to do what you got to do. PFL, Professional Fighters League. Close out the pop-ups. Boom. Oh, no. It's definitely not what we're doing. All right. There we go, way better. Now I gotta fix the clock one more time. Uh oh. Guillotine attempt here from Steven Seiler. No base though. <clears throat> That's probably not in as much trouble. There we go, there's the clock. Your takedown landed from Lance Palmer, though. Steven Seiler is on the outside here, really. Lance Palmer's been controlling the um, action, center of the octagon, coming forward. Landing inside leg kicks. Takedown. From what I've seen in the round, Lance Palmer has been winning this round. And nice little inside leg kick check there. Ooh, nice little hook landed there from Lance Palmer and a high kick returned from Steven Seiler. Oh, Steven Seiler looking to counter him now. Counter Lance Palmer with the right hand. Looks like he just missed there. Ooh, nice body kick from Lance Palmer, but Steven Seiler caught it and he's coming forward now. This is a good fight. Steven Siler staying composed. Now he's pressing forward. Ooh, head kick landed from Steven Siler with 10 seconds left in the round. Then a body kick. He's trying to finish him. You might have him hurt. Oh, left hook over the top landed from Lance Palmer. He's staying composed. Landed a body kick. Holy shit, they both were rocked there at the end of that round. That round ended in a flurry. For sure. My dogs are fighting. Not fighting, fighting like Michael Vick, but the scrapping back there. Man, Steven Siler, but you could say almost stole the round at the end, but Lance Palmer dropped him with about four seconds left. Good little finish to the round there. Let's get the Fight clock off the screen for now. Let me pull it up to where I can see the chat while I'm watching the fight. Let's see. There we go. Pop out chat.
Ooh, yeah, that left hand over the top. And then a body kick from Steven Seiler. Let's see. Chat right here. Make it my boy giving sure name in the building. What's going on? Let's see if I can put the chat up high. There we go. All right. Starting off this round, we got Lance Palmer back in the center of the octagon. Let's get the fight clock on the screen. Lance Palmer threatening with... Uh, he's just coming forward. He's always threatening with that takedown attempt. He showed a good takedowns in that first round. These guys fought in 2017. Lance Palmer won via unanimous decision. As of right now, Steven Seiler, he's, he's being more counteractive here. He's kind of cool, backing up. He's doing a good job of, you know, going to check those leg kicks, those inside leg kicks from Lance Palmer, though. Looking to counter. Steven, Steven Silent now pressing forward. Maybe getting a little more comfortable. Coming forward. Ooh, lands a big right uppercut. Steven Silent getting comfortable with his hands. Changing things up. Ooh, nice left hook landed from Lance Palmer right after an inside leg kick. Steven Siler now pressing forward, though. Center of the octagon almost has Lance Palmer's back to the um, fence. Lance Palmer circles out. Now he's pressing forward. Center of the meeting in the center of the octagon. Nice little straight right from Steven Siler. Steven Siler throws an inside leg kick off of a jab. A little cup check. Kick to the body from Lance Palmer. Lance Palmer comes in with the overhand left into a takedown attempt. Lifts up Steven Seiler, gets him to the mat, and now he's in half guard. Almost full guards and three quarters guard, really. <clears throat> but good takedown for the wrestler Lance Palmer. Lance Palmer controlling him now. Steven Siler looking to get his back to the fence. Lance Palmer holding him down. Steven Siler looking to peel Lance Palmer's hands off. Now he's got to the fence. He's looking to stand up. Working his way back up, but he's almost allowing Lance Palmer to take his back against the fence. He's got his back to the fence almost, but Lance, Lance Palmer does a good job of staying on him and gets his back. Lance Palmer has his back now standing against the fence. But Steven Silas still showing good defense, trying to put his left shoulder down and turn into it, doing a good job of it. Oh, spinning elbow attempt from Lance Palmer, but Steven Silas out now. He doesn't have his back. Lance Palmer has his Steven Silas back against the fence now in a clinch, but he... he doesn't have his back. He doesn't have his back, but Steven Siler's back is to the fence, and they're in a clinch. Um, uh oh, elbows are illegal in PFL, so he's got to be careful. If he would have landed that spinning elbow, that could have been bad. <clears throat> Lucky you missed that spinning elbow there. Steven Siler back to the fence now. Breaks away. Back now pressing the action. Lance Palmer in on a takedown attempt. And he gets it into side control. Steven Siler does a good job of working his way to half guard. But another takedown for Lance Palmer. He hasn't been able to do much with these takedowns, though. He hasn't been able to posture up and do much damage. No submission attempts. Really just getting the takedown. There he goes with some shots to the body, shots over the top. Steven Tyler's working, though. Potential triangle attempt off his back. He's working, throwing shots. Steven Tyler's doing a really good job in this fight. 
Oh, potential left arm bar attempt. He's got like a fucking triangle on his arms and he's landing shots. Lance Palmer trying to pick him up and slam him. Huh. That was a really interesting defense there. Steven Seiler locked him up to where he couldn't move him, was just landing shots from the bottom. I, 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 I mean, Lance Palmer got the takedowns. If that's what the refs are looking for, then he might get the round. But other than the takedowns, I think Steven Seiler's been doing really good in this fight. Nice little uppercut. Um, good defense, attacking off his back. The only thing that I think is going against Steven Seiler is in the beginning of the rounds, he seems to be on his back foot. Be interesting to see how it gets scored. You know, but right now it's anybody's fight, I think. Palmer's got this unless round two is better, says CFR Sports. Kevin Harvest says, I want to see live reaction from Kayla Harrison fight with full time. He's going to be so turned up. Oh, I cannot wait. One of the truest gladiators in MMA history, Google Chad Mendez, says Cadbury Hardwell. I need to make this a little bigger. I can barely see the chat. Oh, wow, it was too big. Let's see. There we go. All right. Coach, what to do, family? Is Coach in the building, CSH Sports. What is going on, Coach? Oh, whoa, beginning of the round. Steven Silas attacking the neck. Looks like he just oh, um, dropped Palmer, and when he was coming up, he attacked his neck. What's going on, Coach? Salute to CSH Combat Sports. Cannot wait for the Kayla Harrison fight. You know it, Coach. You know what we're here for. A lot of good fights tonight, though. PFL. They're gonna. Everybody's that's fighting tonight is fighting for a belt and a million dollars. Six fights, and then the Kayla Harrison fight. Really good PFL event. Ends in a good time. Steven Tyler pressing the action, though, man. Another high kick. He's getting real comfortable. Nice little hook landed from Steven Seiler. He landed a nice left hook after the right high kick, man. The right high kick was blocked, but it's really throwing Lance Palmer off balance. He landed one. Steven Seiler, I really like what he's doing in this fight. Overhand left just missed from Lance Palmer. He just got that takedown, though. Got the takedown, Steven Seiler. Working to half guard, working to stand up, unable to do it. Right now, side control for Lance Palmer, but Steven Seiler is able to get his back to the fence. One thing, I mean, Lance Palmer's getting the takedowns. What he seems to be is a really good wrestler with the overhand, um, but not a lot of offense after he gets the takedown. Steven Seiler's had offense off his back. Right now, he's kind of wrapped up, kind of cradled against the fence a little bit by Lance Palmer. Landing some knees now. Lance Palmer has landed some knees on the ground. Now he's looking to take Steven Tyler's back. He gets it. We'll see where's Jiu-Jitsu at. He's landed some shots over the top. There we go. Sinks in one of the hooks. Has Steven Tyler's back. Sinked in one of the hooks. See if Steven Siler what he can do. He's crafty. But now Lance Palmer's looking to try and sink in a rear naked choke with in this position. He's got Steven Siler's back, got one hook in, and he's working for a rear naked choke right now with two minutes and thirty three seconds left in the round. It's gonna be hard to choke it with one arm though. So Steven Siler kind of just laying here, but still Good position for Lance Palmer. See if he can work out. I think Steven Siler might be holding his arms now. So he can't posture up and land any punches. Uh-oh. Stretched him out a little. Now he's got both hooks in. Well, now he's too high. Steven Siler might be able to come out the back door. But he's going to have to get a little higher. Lance Palmer's not going to be able to get a choke with... His hips as high as they are. He's like a backpack, but he's almost on his shoulders. Steven Siler's almost going to come out of his legs any moment here. Steven Siler crafty, but still not a good position to be in. We will see. Oh, he's out. Steven Siler's out. Back to his feet. Good shit. 
came out the back door, back to their feet. This is a five-round fight. He's throwing bombs now. Steven Shiler, left hook, right hook. He's trying to throw bombs. He's like, I know I lost this round. It's time to do work. Oh, throws a kick, but Lance Palmer's in on a takedown. Gets the takedown into Steven Seiler's guard. Back on his back. That relentless wrestling pressure, that's what's always good to have in your back pocket. I mean, somebody might be a little more crafty than you, might. I mean, that wrestling, though, the, but it, I mean, it really depends on how the judges are scoring the fight. As of right now, if you're scoring this for fight, I mean, Lance Palmer's had the dominant position for sure. Steven Seiler on his back. Lance Palmer looking to try and transition to side control. But Steven Seiler looking to lock up that, that defense he had, <laughs> that, that, like, rubber guard on Lance Palmer's arm. Wasn't able to do it. Lance Palmer back into full guard. Thirteen seconds left. Steven Siler looking to attack that arm again. Oh, shot over the top from Lance Palmer. He's landing some shots over the top here. With rounds left, he's working in some ground and pound now. Actually getting some shots off. Oh, stream lagged right with four seconds left, but I'm sure nobody got finished. You just landed a good finish to the round for Lance Palmer. I'm going to round three now. Fight clock off the screen. Playing 2K, listening to the play-by-play. -play. Multitask, this is Cat Bar Hardware. Hell yeah. Gary Kendrick Jr., you already know he loves him some Kayla Harrison. Ah, uh, you know what it is. Anyway, I love me some Kayla Harrison, man. Maybe a little. But I just feel, you know, I just think it's a position that people are incorrect on, and I'm trying to enlighten the family. Full time, I'm watching to CSH Combat Sports. Oh, yeah, you've got to watch this. I'm looking forward to your post fight um, video, coach. Got to see. Cadbury Harbor says, I'm actually here to watch Big Full Time watch Kayla. If she loses, oh my God, bro, it's going to need a hug. It's not happening. Come on, dog. Ms. Charneski is getting disarmed tonight. All right, round three underway. Let's get it on my screen. Fights with the chat. Here we go. Lance Palmer pressing the action here. Oh, this is round four. Oh, this is round four. I'm tripping. This is round four. This is the championship round. Steven Siler on his back foot. Lance Palmer pressing forward. Steven Siler takes a couple steps forward, pumping out his jab, but really looks like he's looking to counter. Nice little inside leg kick from Lance Palmer. Steven Seiler, looks like he's conserving his energy a little bit, waiting for the counter on his back foot, though. Back almost to the cage now. We're backed up here. Really looks like he's waiting for that counter. because and he, Also, you can't be too aggressive against a wrestler, because if you come forward, he shoots for the takedown. Next fight. Of the night is going to be Nathan Schulte versus Rashid Magomedov for the lightweight title. Right now we're in the fourth round of the featherweight million dollar title fight. Lance Palmer leaping in with a little right hook there. Might have touched Steven Siler a little bit. Oh, takedown attempt from, from Lance Palmer. Successful. Into half guard. Now he's landing some shots to the body. Actually getting some shots off here. Controlling Steven Siler's left arm on the ground. Landing some shots to the body with his right hand. Lance Palmer is. Yep, Lance Palmer dominating this top position. Trying to transition into side control. I'm trying to use his legs and transition. Controlling Steven Siler's right left wrist with his left arm. 
Now he's landing some shots. Let that left wrist go, and now he's winging off some shots. Trying to land some ground and pound. These guys, throughout the season, haven't fought five-round fights. It's the first five-round fight, and they are in the championship rounds now, so that's interesting. I'm going to really have to make sure you... I'm sure they trained for six rounds for this fight, though. million dollars and a title. Takedown rounds. Nut check time, says Cadbury Hardwell. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, Steven Tyler trying to roll out here. I'm trying to get off of his back from half guard. But Lance Palmer using this half guard to his advantage, landing some ground and pound. Half guard is even a better position for him to be in here than full guard. Because there's no, you can't have this triangle attempt. I mean, he tried to transition, but without it, he's just landing some ground and pound here, just holding down Steven Siler, landing, using this wrestling, landing some shots. Not any vicious ground and pound, but enough to work. He's working, landing shots to the body. Happy New Year, Coach. Happy New Year, Leon Dubison. Happy New Year to everybody. Lance Palmer. Landing these shots now. Landing some big shots. Big ground and pound with left hand. He's controlling Steven Siler's right wrist and landing some big shots with his left hand now. Steven Siler looking to, trying to turn out of this position. He's almost giving up his back in doing so. He's eating some big shots and he just gave up the choke. It's under the neck now. Oh, but Lance Palmer let it go. It was under, it was under the neck, but he only had it with one hand. He would have had to get his other arm free. Steven Siler was controlling it. Just went back to punching Steven Siler in the head. 30 seconds left. Just flatten Steven Siler back out now. Steven Siler still trying to work off his back. Trying to get out. A little hip escape. Halfway out. Not all the way though. Shots to the body from Lance Palmer. Steven Siler is going to need a huge fifth round here because it's a dominant round for Lance Palmer. Dominant fourth round. Shots to the body. Here it is. This dude looks like a featherweight Ryan Bader. We'll see who's going to be the featherweight champion of the PFL. Fifth round coming up. He's going to have to land some sort of knee when Lance Palmer shoots for a takedown. Some sort of submission. It's what's going to take here, I think, for Steven Silo. I think it's going to take a finish. Round five coming up. Featherweight title fight, PFL. Inaugural champion to be crowned. Landed some big shots at the end of that round. Some of the biggest ground and pound he landed was at the end of that first round, fourth round. Fifth round coming up. Fight clock on the screen. Steven Tyler coming forward. He's coming forward. He's being too aggressive. He's going to get taken down being this aggressive. Oh, nice little inside leg kick followed by single leg takedown and tip. Unsuccessful. Silas pressing, pressing the action. He's getting aggressive. He's getting desperate, I feel like, but doing that opens up that takedown attempt so he's gonna have to find a way to be aggressive and still counter the takedown lifted his leg that's dangerous against a wrestler throws him up gets him against the cage lands a left hook silo on the offensive oh clinched up Lance Palmer spins his back to the fence Lance Palmer now controlling this clinch if he's able to get a takedown here not gonna be good for Steven Siler. Lance Palmer controlling his back against the fence now controlling that Aggression and flurry from Steven Siler. Desperate Steven Siler, who got dominated in the fourth round, looking for a big moment. They break away now. Steven Siler still being aggressive, pressing 
the wrestlers put back to the fence. Coming with the knee. Steven Sally coming forward with the knee. That's good. Back to the center of the octagon. Steven Siler, a lot of that aggression here. Maybe he feels like the wrestler might be a little tired and he can take advantage of it. He's going to need a finish. Three minutes and 33 seconds left in the round. Lance Palmer backing up a little bit. Steven Siler pressing forward. Still got to be a little cautious. Oh, double leg takedown attempt. Gets the takedown. Steven Tyler, Steven S Tyler, Steven Siler on his back. Lance Palmer in that half guard. Three minutes away from a million dollars and a featherweight title. Here we go. About. Two minutes and 48 seconds left till they announce the million dollar winner, Featherweight. Oh, and there's that little arm triangle off this back from Steven Seiler. Lance Palmer still in top position as long as he can avoid being submitted here. He's in good position to win this fight. Is that proper 12 in that mug? No, it's not. <laughs> I was going to go to the liquor store, but uh, I don't have the money right now. So I'm going to wait till my girl gets off work and we'll probably go. Two minutes to go. Steven Silas still landing shots or eating shots on his back. He's got some little rubber guard, but he's getting punched through his little rubber guard. He's not really landing any sort of submission here. <laughs> Steven Siler still on his back, unable to find the submission. How much does the loser get to CFR Sports? Nothing. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'm not sure how much the loser gets. He's too tired to defend takedowns now. He's got to come up with the round two button punch. <laughs> R2 button punch. <laughs> Hit him with that haymaker. Oh, shots over the top from Lance Palmer. Steven Seiler went to complain about something, but then he ate a couple shots. Shots over the top from Lance Palmer. Lance Palmer just digging into Steven Seiler's body from the top. One minute left. Steven Seiler's got one minute to steal this fight. We'll see if he can do it. Oh, big shot from Lance Palmer. Now he's got that wrist ride position. He's controlling Steven Siler's right wrist with his right hand, landing some big shots with his left hand. Hmm? At game time, AP's not playing. No. At game time. That's crazy. That's crazy. Here we go, 16 seconds left. Big shot still from Lance Palmer. Oh, big shots. Not a good position at all for Steven Siler. He's not going to be able to work a miracle out in these last six seconds. It looks like we will be a featherweight champion of Lance Palmer. He got it done. $6 from Cadbury Hardwell in the Super Chat. Yo, thank you, Cadbury. Much appreciated, man. He's done, says CFR Sports. Half Nelson control. Yeah, man. <clears throat> and then those big shots from that half Nelson, that wrist ride. Son of a gun. Holding these alligators down. Woo! Cadbury Hardwell with the $6 in the super chat. Much appreciated, Cadbury. We're going to announce the official decision coming up next of the inaugural PFL featherweight champion. Likely going to be Lance Palmer, barring some robbery, which I doubt is going to happen. That takedown, he, I think he got a takedown in every round, all five rounds. Smothered him from that top position. That should be enough for some New Year's Proper 12 for you and the wifey. The um, Proper 12, I think, is like 
21 bucks. But um, Super Chats, you don't get until the end of the month. You get it when you get your, you know, it comes in with your advertisement pennies, all your Super Chat dollars. So, uh, you yeah, you get a check at the end of the month for that. But if, you see, I, yeah, if you would have known, if you sent it through PayPal, then I could have actually went into, you know, I could have used it today. But yeah, Super Chat, they don't give you to the end of the month. YouTube got to take their cut, and then they send it to you. Next fight coming up is going to be the lightweight title fight. Let's get the fight clock off the screen. And I don't get, I like, I literally, like, if, yeah, I don't even have it to cover until then. I don't get my paycheck till Friday. So Friday, I, I'm good. Or when my girl gets off, because she, you know, she's going to have some money when she comes home. But right now, yeah, I'm just, my shit's dry. <clears throat> We got Nathan Schultz versus Rashid Magomedov. Nathan Schultz, 14, 3 and 1 as a pro. Rashid Magomedov, 22, 2 and 1. So who you guys got in this fight? Rashid Magomedov or Nathan Schultz? He's got Magomedov. That's close enough to Khabib for me. I got Khabib. I mean, I mean Rashid. Okay, no, I don't know who I got. What up, full time? What's going on, Cam Murphy, the Irish Queen in the building? Watching these million dollar title fights, waiting for the main event. Two time, two time. You know what time it is. Nathan Short versus Rashid Magomedov coming up. Time for another belt and another million dollars to be handed out as they announce the official decision. Here are the judges' scorecards. 50-43, New millionaire and new PFL featherweight champ of the world, Lance Palmer. That's what I'm talking about. Another million dollar winner, another champion crown. Every single one of these fights, man. This is unprecedented, you guys. Sort of like, once people see, and I, I think, I forget who it was that I heard say it like this, but I mean, already a million dollars is a huge payday. Could you imagine being like the, the number, I don't know, let's say seventh ranked fucking lightweight in the world? Like, well, let me see if the UFC still has rankings on their new website since they fucked it up. UFC rankings. Like, let's look at some of these rankings. Like, so they have featherweights. <clears throat> Cub Swanson. Could you imagine being Cub Swanson and seeing, you know, these featherweights make a million dollars? And actually, I mean, Lance Palmer, I mean, versus Cub Swanson might be a good fight. He's a really tough wrestler. But still, I, a lot of these guys probably feel like they would have a good chance at, at the million dollars fighting for the PFL. You could see PFL being able to recruit some bigger names, some Bellator guys. I mean, there, there's there's probably people that feel like they can compete with these PFL guys. I mean, Justin Gaethje. He used to fight for the World Series of Fighting. Justin Gaethje could win a million bucks over here, I feel like. Great wrestling. I mean, I think he'd be a great fighter. He was the PFL champion before he left the, for the World Series of Fighting. So he could be having a million bucks. So, I mean, I, I could see the PFL next season's going to be, I think, pretty interesting. <clears throat> Kevin Lee. I mean, you might need to come to the PFL, bro, because that Ally Quinta loss was a big setback. That was a setback. 
Steve, man, Steven Siler, that was a good fight. I mean, even though he got dominated, he was pretty crafty. And I mean, he he was he didn't have what it took took to win this fight, but a couple times where he landed some big shots, and there was a couple times where he threw up some submission attempts and was working off his back and, and was being active off his back because Lance Palmer didn't have a whole lot of offense. I feel like early in the early in the fight, the first two rounds. He, well, he had the takedowns, but I didn't feel like he was doing much. I feel like Steven Siler, those ones were toss-ups, those first two rounds. Um, but throughout the fight, that wrestling pressure was just too much. But, yeah, it was still a good fight. Got the lightweights coming up next. Then the light heavyweights. Then the heavyweights. We're going to have the welterweights last. Ray Cooper the third versus Magomed, Magomed Kerry Move. What the hell do these dudes just do? Like... They just, like, did some crazy celebration. Like, they all ran in different angles and ran into the fence. <laughs> what the hell? That was pretty funny. I thought I thought there was, like, a brawl going on. Seeing people running in the cage, but it was just some form of celebration. Got the lightweights coming up next. Then we're going to have the big boys in there. Let's close that out. Gonna have probably a commercial breaker coming up first. Let's close this. Lance Palmer, featherweight champion of PFL. Kevin Lee should move up to 170 and rematch Michael Chiesa, says CFR Sports. Ooh, I like that, CFR. I like that. He talked about moving up. Yeah, that'd be a good fight. It's on NBC Sports, yeah. Yep, for sure, J Skills. Salute. VIP box as well. Folk style wrestling taking over, says Cadbury Hardwell. Is he kin to Khabib too? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. One of Khabib's cousins are, are do fight for the PFL, but I don't think he made it to the finals. Uh oh, Kayla Harrison coming up, training, warming up in the background. I tell you where you don't want to be in a motherfucking clinch with Kayla Harrison. No, 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 not if you. No matter, that's not the that's not the position you want to be in in that fight. That's not gonna be your strength. That's gonna that's her strength. So that's all, that's all I say. Like. Man, I, I really think we might see MMA's first disarmament tonight. It's possible. Maybe not. It's 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 possible. It's possible. Got some commercials coming up, though. Let's see what we got in the meantime, in between time. Let's, like, go to UFC Yankovic. I have, a, like, right now... I'm not amped up. I mean, I'm looking forward to these heavyweight fight and a light heavyweight fight, really. But I just have a feeling that I'm gonna be like overcome with excitement right around Kayla Harrison fight time. I don't know why. I just feel like I just I, I kind of feel it coming. What are we about to play? Rap Devil. I'll beat your ass. <clears throat> we ain't played this in a while. We were just talking about Justin Gaethje. We're watching some PFL. Hey, well the boys round here don't have no fear. James Vick's been talking shit, so I'ma kick him in his rear. I'ma kick him in his legs, then I'ma punch him in his ear. Yeah, I'ma knock this fucker out, then I'ma buy us both the beer. You see, I've had a long day with training and stacking haste, so I don't got time for all your bitching and whining. I don't know what you were thinking when you signed up to fight me at UFC Lincoln, but you had to be drinking. You had to be thinking that you were actually decent, but I'm about to prove you not when I beat your ass this weekend. They call me Justin Gaethje, and I know you fucking hate me, but the fans all love me, and you, they don't fuck with. Beat your ass, then get another truck with the money that I want, and give the rest to my honey. See, the boys round here don't have no fear. We're fighting in the UFC and it's just you and me Sing along while I give me a beer Yeah, see the boys round here Don't have no fear 
fighting in the UFC And it's just the you and me Sing along while I give me a beer Yeehaw! Wow, Justin Gaethje, it's clear that you're fucking crazy If you think that you can see me, I'm John Cena and you're Stevie We both know that you can't beat me You're riding a losing streak In your fight IQ, it stinks Every fight you be taking beatings And I'm not gonna take it easy Yeah, I'm coming for your rank And I'm coming to put that performance of the night bonus in the bank And I'm not the one to play with most dangerous and underrated If you ain't know, they call me James Vick And now let me hear you sing it The boys round here Don't have no fear we're fighting in the UFC and it's just you and me Sing along while I give me a beer Yeehaw! See the boys round here Don't have no fear We're fighting in the UFC and it's just you and me Sing along while I give me a beer Yeehaw! Share this video full time family if you enjoyed it Yeah full time family That was a fun one Happy New Year's to everybody in the chat. We're watching PFL right now. PFL 2018 World Championships. Six title fights. Six million dollar title fights, I should say. Each winner will be crowned the inaugural champion of the respective division and win one million dollars. Can't wait. We already had a few champions and million dollar winners tonight. We had Luis Taylor knock out a bus and Michael Madoff in 39 seconds, 51 seconds, 36 seconds, actually, I think. Made a million dollars in 36 seconds. Louis Taylor came through 10 years the elder of a bus Muggle Madoff and knocked him out with a leaping left hook, sit clean out, one shot to follow up, but it was over. Million dollar winner, 39 years old, just won a million bucks. So let's go back to the UFC rankings, actually. That would be a good example, the middleweight division. Oh, that would be a fucking great example. UFC rankings. Okay. Let's look at Derek Brunson. Chris Weidman. Perfect. Well, Chris Weidman might make more than a million dollars. Derek Brunson, Brad Tavares, Jared Cannonier, David Branch. These guys could be fighting for a million dollars. I don't think they're making that in the UFC. Pretty sure they're not even close. Paulo Costa, Israel Adesanya, Jacare, yeah, who knows. But a lot of these guys, do you think Derek Brunson could beat 39-year-old Luis Taylor? I mean, of course he could land that leap and left hook, but got a good chance of winning that million dollars. A lot of fighters. You got guys like Rafael Lovato Jr., um, Alexander Slomenko, Gegard Mousasi, these guys, they might want to fight for a million dollars. Gegard Mousasi is probably good, pretty good over at Bellator, but I'm just saying, I would not be surprised if some people dipped for the PFL. I don't think they have flyweight or bantamweight, though, or some of these bantamweights, or some of these flyweights that, that were leaving the UFC. Oh, they would definitely go become bantamweights at the PFL for sure. Fucking Sergio Pettis, fuck you guys, I'm going to win a million dollars. You know, Ray Borg, whoever's going up the bantamweight. Lance Palmer became the featherweight champion, won a million dollars. And next we got Nathan Schultz versus Rashid Mago Madoff. Fights are being, they're, they're showing some of the lead up, some of Nathan Schultz highlights. Coming into this fight. Happy New Year, full time. And may Fuchs enjoy the night, says Almighty Khan. Yes, sir, you too. Fire the laser. My apologies, California, no pun intended. Cam Murphy says, This Michael Madoff doesn't wrestle like Khabib. Yeah, not yet. I don't think he's um related to Khabib. If he was, you know, as good as Khabib at 34 years old, he might have been in the UFC already. But hey, maybe he's one of the dudes that came over from the ACB. They got some fucking savages over there. Maybe when he came over to the PFL. Yeah, but if they lose, what is the pace? This Cadbury hardware. I don't know. They might make their show money. Shoot, they might. It's going to be a lot less than a million dollars. 
Shit, these guys might make $10,000 if they lose, if that. But if you win tonight, you might make a million. CFR Sports says, short got this one. I said, Rashid came, came from the boxing background in Dagestan. He didn't go to the wrestling school as a kid, so he's not... He's not a wrestler. He's not a dominant wrestler like the Khabibs and, and guys like that. So he's going to be coming in looking to throw some hands. Nathan Schultz fighting out of Brazil. This dude looks a little like Canelo low-key. Jay Skill says, I was surprised to see some in the undercard of 232 make 6,000, 10,000. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that, it used to be, I thought their minimum was 8-8 eight and eight in the UFC. I don't know, I'm not 100% sure though, or 10-10. Ten and 10. I didn't, I, yeah, I don't know how much they make minimum in the UFC, but yeah, it could even be, like, yeah, 10000 might be a lot. If you lose in the PFL, like, your show money might be $4,000. But you can win a million if you win the championship. If you're the best of the best. Here we go. PFL Lightweight Championship of the World. Justin Gaethje, Kevin Lee, guys like that are probably watching this fight. Like, that should be me fighting for a million dollars. Rashid Magomedov, 22-2-1 and one as a professional. Nathan Schulte is a judo practitioner. Team motherfucking Schulte, let's go! I'm going for Team team Schulte just because he, he's fucking a judo practitioner. And Kayla Harrison's fighting tonight. I'm not even like a judo, you know what I'm saying? It's just like... Team Kayla Harrison is kind of like making me kind of root for Nathan Schulte. J. Skill says, I looked up the payout, saw a dude make 6K to show 10K to win. Who was that? Because I thought their minimum was 8K. That would be surprising. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Maybe that's just how his contract worked. Maybe he was more confident in his win or something. I don't know. Cadbury, I know 20K is not the minimum, no matter what, like, for UFC newcomers. All right, fight starting. Fight starting. Here we go. Schulte throwing it. Outside leg kick to start the fight off. Fight clock on the screen. All right, here we go. Um, Nathan Schulte's got Rashid Magomedov back to the cage. He's not clinched up yet. He's coming forward now. Now he gets the clinch. That's what Nathan Schulte wants. It's the judo practitioner. He's now got Rashid Magomedov pressed back against the fence in the clinch. Landing uh, inside knee to the thigh. I'm trying to land some outside knees. J. Skill says just Google UFC 232 payouts. I will. I will. Ooh. Nathan Schulte looking for a potential trip. Didn't get it though. Still looking for that trip in the clinch. Has both underhooks Nathan Schulte does in this clinch. Schultz really working to get this fight to the ground. Got the underhooks, unable to get the trip. Not able to do a lot in this clinch right now. But still the position he wants to be in because Magomedov might have the better boxing, I would imagine. Twenty K for the main card loser, says Cadbury Hardwell. Yeah, main card that might be right. That might be right. <clears throat> you might be right on that. I'm not sure though at all. Still got the clinch, Nathan Schultz. Nathan Schultz controlling this clinch, trying to land some knees, trying to pull Rashid Magomedov off the fence and try and get a trip. Unsuccessful takedown attempt so far. Rashid Magomedov now has an underhook with his right hand. 
back still to the fence though. Nice knee to the body from Rashid Magomedov. Nathan Schultz going to have to do some work in this judo position, in this clinch. He's clearly not training with the American top team because Kayla Harrison can't just be holding people against the fence like that. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, there he goes with the nice little trip, and he get, transitions straight into Rashid Magomedov's back, but Rashid just stands right up, and he slips off. Oh, two front kicks to the face. As soon as Nathan Schultz stands up, he gets kicked in the face. And then he shakes it off and gets kicked in the face again, but he's still up. It wasn't like a front kick to the chin. It didn't knock him out. He just got kicked in the face a couple times. Good little scramble from Rashid Magomedov. Got out of the clinch, got the short off his back, he slipped off. Now he's looking to come forward with his boxing. Oh, nice outside leg kick from short, followed by a left hand. Nathan Schultz now starting to press Rashid Magomedov back toward the cage a little bit. Trying to cut off the octagon lens outside leg kick. Kick to the body fired back from Rashid Magomedov. Coming forward. Oh, nice left hook landed from Nathan Schultz as he tries to press Rashid Magomedov back to the cage. Outside leg kick landed from Rashid Magomedov. Nice body kick from Nathan Schultz, though. Ooh, Superman punch from Rashid Magomedov right there. Nathan Short really working to get this fight to the fence. He throws a right hand followed by a left hook that connects, and then he, now he has this clinch. He's got Rashid Magomedov pressed against the fence, but Rashid circles him off, and now he has control of the clinch. Breaks away, though. That's not where he wants to be. Ooh, nice little spinning um, kick to the body from Rashid Magomedov. I don't know if it's, it's definitely not anything to... I don't know if he's won the round yet. It's close. It's really close. He had that scramble and some, some good... He landed some good shots, but Schultz had that position against the fence for a while. Not Nice outside leg kick there from Schultz. Close round one. Maybe Schultz has the edge, but five rounds. This fight's still it's too early to call. Who you guys got that round for? Be interesting to see if they can keep this up for five rounds because throughout the entire regular season, these guys never fought five rounds. So they had to train, you know, for five rounds in this fight. But clearly, it's they're motivated with the million dollars on the line and the belt. Mm, front kicks to the face, though. Those could have been lethal. Montel Jackson, 16,000. 6,000 and 10,000. Okay, J Skills. So 6,000 for the undercard fighter. Okay. Damn, I thought the minimum was higher than that. That's interesting. And I was even looking, that's a fight I was even looking forward to. Like, I actually liked that fight. <clears throat> All right, round two underway. Nice little hook landed there from Rashid Magomedo. Nathan Schultz doing a good job of closing distance and trying to get this fight closer to the fence to where he can potentially get that clinch. Pressing forward. Picking his shots. Both fighters trading inside leg kicks right there. Nice body punch from Rashid Magomedov. Rashid Magomedov trying to press forward with a right hook, high kick combination. Gets this fight back to the center of the octagon. Nathan Short lands outside leg kick, though. Nice inside leg kick returns from Rashid Magomedov. 
outside leg kick from Rashid. Eats a hook. Nathan Schultz still pressing forward. Nice outside leg kick landed from Nathan Schultz. Threw Rashid Magomedov off balance a little bit. Nice double jab from Nathan Schultz. Oh my shit. Oh shit. They just said next fight is Kayla Harrison versus Morio Chardinesky. Oh shit, guys. It's lit. Oh, I gotta roll up for the for the result, for the win. Nathan Schultz still working to get this fight close to the fence. Y'all, I just fucking I can't even. I didn't expect that. Oh dude, don't throw me off like that, PFL. I did not expect that. And you guys, yes, my New Year's resolution is to quit smoking. It's gonna happen tonight. I did it for like a week, but then Christmas came and some shit happened. Spinning back fist attempt from Rashid Magomedov. Coming forward, looking like he's getting a little looser with his strikes. Punch to the body from Rashid, followed by a hook attempt, which missed. Nathan Short now back on the offensive, but he eats a right hook to the chin from Rashid Magomedov. Nice right hook throws um, Nathan Short off balance. Didn't quite rock him, but it was a good right hook to the chin. Looking to land some more hooks. Rashid Magomedov eats an outside leg kick there. Man, a, mil a million dollars is probably a lot in Dagestan if this dude wins. He ain't got Khabib money, but it's a lot. Ooh, nice shot from Rashid Magomedov there. Jab lands. Back to the fence here, though. Got to circle out. Nathan Schultz still trying to close the distance. You know he really wants to be in that clinch. Rashid Magomedov looking to land a kick to the body. Just fainted it. Didn't throw it. Jab hook attempt. Just misses from Nathan Schultz. Poking the eye from... Rashid Magomedov gets a time call from the referee. Just needs a second. It was an accidental eye poke. I'm giving him a little bit of time. A minute and 33 seconds left in the round. And it was when Nathan Schultz was coming in on that hook jab attempt. Jab hook. And he got poked in the eye whenever... Rashid pressed his arms in defense, put him out there. I'm getting checked by the doctor. Boss Rutten. Oh, they're taking a point. They're taking a point for the eye poke because he did it in defense. Oh, wow. So they're discussing it now. Boss Rutten, he made an interesting point. So Nathan Schultz, I mean, he he didn't, wasn't even happy about winning the point. Like, he was on the winning. He thought it was accidental. He was cool with it. He just wanted a second to shake it off. Oh, but now that, that pissed Rashid off. He's coming forward now. Now that he lost this point, he just threw some heat immediately off the break. Came out with the jab, jab straight. I mean, throwing some heat with it, too. Now he's pumping out that jab. Coming forward. He's getting aggressive now. He's like, fuck the bullshit. Front kick to the body from Rashid Magomedov. Got a little extra urgency now. And this round might be a wash for him. We knocked his scoring card right there. A lot of times they give a guy a warning first. They didn't even give him a warning there. Um, one thing I will say, nice kick to the body from Rashid Magomedov. One thing about that, I mean, I'm not angered by that point taken all the way because it was a defensive eye poke. Dude was coming in to punch him, and he pressed out, like, you know, to push him away, and the finger went in his eye. It's not like he was throwing a punch and poked him in the eye on accident. 
he was trying to get out the way, and that was a def like that eye poke kind of saved him from that that hook. So I mean, I'm not all the way mad at the point being taken away, but I mean, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been mad if he just gave him a warning either. But now he's 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 coming forward now, trying to land shots to the body. The better boxer for sure, trying to be aggressive with it and not be at risk of getting taken down. He's really good at throwing these kicks as well, Rashid Magomedov. Round two coming to a conclusion. What do you guys think about that eye poke? Do you guys think it was should there, a point should have been taken? Do you think there should have been a warning? Ked Barr says, eye pokes are very dangerous. John Jones knows he ain't right. And what Boss Rutten was saying is he said, we, I used to fight Pancrase, and we had open hand strikes. Nobody ever got poked in the eye. I don't understand why we see all of these eye pokes in MMA. It's like these guys, you know, using that reach. That was really like a defensive hand out, and he got poked in the eye. Like that eye poke kind of saved him there. So it might have something to do with it. So, yeah, the refs ain't playing with eye pokes at CFR Sports. They took that point, and, hey, I ain't mad at it. I'm definitely not mad at it. Here we go. Can you fucking believe I thought they were going to save Kayla Harrison for the main event. Oh, shit, son. Oh, shit, son. It's going to be crazy. Her teammate Amanda Nunes became the double champ. Ready, ready, fight. Round three underway. Rashid Mago made a aggressive boxing to start the round. Got his arm out there, looking to throw a hook. Front kick to the body from Rashid. Nathan Short starting to be aggressive. So they're about these guys are about to get to banging because Nathan, there it goes. Nathan Short, he's aggressive, and Rashid. He's turned it up a little bit, so these guys both being aggressive is going to lead to a motherfucking firefight here. Nice left hook from Rashid Magomedov. Both these guys are coming forward. Here they, here we go. Nathan Schultz willing to stand with him. He's willing to come forward with you. Nice kick to the body from Rashid Magomedov. I think somebody might be uh, going to sleep in this round. Nathan Schultz, he, he's being aggressive. Coming forward with the right hook, left hook. Now he's in. Got his hands locked. Got the both underhooks now in the clinch. <clears throat> Nathan Short trying to control this fight now in the clinch. See what we can do. He was looking for those trips a lot earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if he looks for a trip attempt any time here. Judo throw, judo sweep. Just a regular trip as he was looking for earlier. Throwing some knees in here in the clinch. Nathan Short. This dude looks like a little Blake Griffin. Rashid Magomedov's back to the fence. Three minutes and 15 seconds left to go in round three of five. Uh oh, got. He looks like he's in a better position for a judo throw here. Nathan Schultz. Oh, switches back to the. Clinch. Now Rashid Magomedov has an underhook. Nathan Schultz throws a knee to the thigh. Oh, now Rashid breaks out of the clinch. Left hook from Nathan Schultz. Goes forward with the jab still being aggressive. Rashid tries to tee off with the right hand. Looks like he might have just missed. Nathan Schultz still clinching up with him. Center of the octagon. Lands a knee to the body. Break away from the clinch. Looks like that right hand from Rashid was blocked. Nice, nice hook to the body there from Rashid, followed by a body kick. Nathan Schultz still being aggressive, still coming forward, looking to land a shot and get get Rashid's back to the fence. Nathan Schultz looking to land an inside leg kick, close the distance. Rashid's gonna have to circle out back real close to the fence. Nathan Schultz cutting off the octagon. Nathan Short doing a good job of cutting off the octagon. He just misses on a big right hand, Nathan Short. Now they clinch up for a second. Out of the clinch. Nathan Short 
Nice right hand over the top there. Left hook there. Looks like it took Rashid off balance a little bit, even if it was blocked a little. Inside leg kick from Nathan Schultz. Nice right hand from Rashid Magomedov right there. Ooh, body kick from Rashid Magomedov. Might have hit Nathan Schultz's elbow a little. Double jab into the clinch from Nathan Schultz. Now he's got Rashid clinched against the fence. Lost the underhook already. Only has one underhook. Rashid uses the underhook to turn the clinch around. Rashid went for the judo throw. They break away from the clinch. Judo throw unsuccessful. Schultz coming forward. Kick to the body. Got Rashid's back to the fence. Landing a couple good body shots there. Nathan Schultz in another gear right now, man. He's still being aggressive. He looks fresh like he did in the first round. Just being aggressive, pressing the action. Um, knees in the clinch here. Got the fight clinched back up. I think Nathan Schultz looking good in this round. And then that point, of course, is going to help. A little knee in the clinch from Nathan Schultz. Nice little straight left lands there from Rashid Magomedov. Nathan Schultz eats a right hand there. Coming in, being aggressive, eats a left hand. Rashid lands a couple good shots. Nathan Schultz being aggressive at the end of the round. Ooh, nice spinning heel kick to the body from Rashid Magomedov. Oh, Superman punch to finish off the round from Rashid. Interesting round. Nathan Schultz looked like he was getting tired toward the end of that round. I mean, he slowed down a little at the end of the round. I feel like yeah, that was a nice left hook landed from Rashid Magomedov in that round. Liver shot, body kick. I'm going to work with this boxing, really. But Nathan Schultz had a lot of good positions as well. Going into the championship rounds. Mayweather clowning fans with that setup exhibition debacle. Yo, Mayweather fucking clean that dude up. Why'd they do that to motherfucking Tenshin Nasukawa, dog? Why'd they do that to, to so what's that dude's name from Rush Hour? Fucking <laughs> Jun Tao? Why did fucking Chris Tucker just beat Jun Tao's ass like that? Here we go. Round four. Center of the octagon. Nathan Schultz gets the clinch and a trip, but he eats a right hand first. He gets the clinch, but he's not able to really keep the fight to the floor. But he does, even though they're stood up, he does have Rashid, Rashid Magomedov's back, but he circles out, gets his back to the fence. Nathan Schultz now in the clinch position, has one underhook against the fence. This is the first time Nathan Schultz has been past three rounds in his fighting career. In the championship rounds, fighting for a million dollars and a featherweight title. Could be up two rounds. He's got his right underhook in the clinch against the fence right now. With Rashid Magomedov's back to the fence. Rashid Magomedov lands a little choppy shot inside, just staying busy. Double underhooks now from Nathan Schultz. Landing some knees inside. Knees to the thigh. Looking to use these underhooks and control Rashid Magomedov, but not really super successful in the clinch with his takedowns for a judo practitioner. I don't think he um, won any medals in the Olympics, but still judo background. Ronda Rousey wouldn't have had somebody standing up in the clinch this long. She would have had him on his back. But it's all good. It's all good. Not him specifically. I'm just saying in her fights. 
Shri Mago made of um, not going down easy. But Nathan Schultz still looks fresh. Coming forward, clinching up in the center of the octagon, lands a knee. I think he'd be a beast with some Muay Thai. But she, she's got some really clean boxing, dude. Really clean boxing. He's landing some good shots, trying to pick apart Nathan Schultz as he presses forward to get the clinch against the fence. Nathan Schultz, takedown attempt with a little throw. Barely gets it, but it was successful. Grabs onto Rashid's back, but Rashid stands up. Nathan Schultz uses that to throw him back to the floor for a second. Stands back up with his back. He's going to try and use his judo here, but Rashid Magomedov able to work his back to the fence. I mean, he's got judo for a couple throws, but he's not very good at keeping him down. But maybe that's just a, you know, how good... Rashad, uh, Rashid Magomedov is. Rashid Magomedov now has the double underhook with his back to the fence. Uses that to turn around the clinch. Nathan Short uses a trip with his back to the fence. He's able to trip Rashid. Take him down. Straight back up though. Takes him down again. He's just throwing him to the ground. Rashid's doing a great job of standing back up, but he's getting tossed to the ground. Standing back up, Nathan Schultz controlling his back against the fence. Little knee to the thigh. Mago Madoff looks like he's slowing down a little bit. Back to the fence. <laughs> Inside knee to the body from Rashid Magomedov with his back to the fence. Nathan Schultz still just working this clinch. Not landing many shots or anything, just controlling Rashid with his back to the fence. Still got another round, championship rounds. Nathan Schultz still looking good for this his first time outside the third round. He's still coming forward here. Eats a kick to the body. Looks like it hurt Nathan Schultz a little bit, that kick to the body, but he's still pressing forward. This, he's got a really impressive cardio right now. Nice left hook inside the clinch from Rashid Magomedov. Nathan Schultz got the fight back in the clinch where he likes it. Rashid's back to the fence. Round's over. Going to the fifth and final round. Winner of this round gets a million dollars and becomes PFL's lightweight champion. Also keep in mind Rashid Magomedov lost a point. That's big. When you're fighting for a million dollars and you lose a point, that's big time. That that point could have cost you potentially a million dollars. What if he lost this fight by one point? Oh, I'd be fucked up. But I don't think that's the way it's going right now. He's landing some good shots. Got some clean boxing. But um, I think Nathan Schultz winning this fight so far. Look at McGregor's proper 12 on the canvas as a sponsor. Yeah, yeah, I seen that on the last PFL. Jay Skills says, I thought he had a Brazilian mouthpiece. Nathan Schultz it says his country is from, he is from Brazil. Does he even have the stream of PFL MMA stream isn't working? Says Mass123, got your back. Full time, your stream's behind. Try and refresh this, Cam Murphy. Yeah, but there's probably a little delay on my end. But mine says I'm live on mine. I'm on VIP League, so if that's the one you're on, I should probably be with you. I just refresh it, so that's where the fight clock went. I'm going to see if I refresh it, if it goes. You know, I think we're here. Yeah, 4 minutes and 32 seconds left in the fifth round. This is going to be a 
close. It's, this could end up being a close fight on the judges' scorecards. And if that's the case, that one point could be crucial to Rashid Magomedov. Rashid, he's thrown a whole lot more punches in the first four rounds, and he's already starting to in this round. But the clinch control, the takedowns, and the point taken could factor into this fight. A little throwdown from Nathan Schultz. He never really been able to keep Rashid down. Hasn't been able to take him down in the clinch. He's able to throw him down a little bit, and then he'll stand back up. Just did it again. Threw him down. Now Rashid is on his knees, standing back up against the fence. Rashid's done a good job of use, always turning around in this clinch. Whenever Nathan Short has his back, he always just turns out of it. Rashid Magomedov now has an underhook, reaching for his second. Unsuccessful Nathan Schultz has the left underhook, reaching down for a potential takedown attempt. Stream froze. Gotta refresh that. Refresh. There we go. Two minutes and 57 seconds left in the round. Nathan Schultz. Still controlling this clinch. Rashid Magomedov trying to use an underhook and get out of the clinch. He's on the way out. Nathan Schultz keeping him cl close. Magomedov tried to trip him. Un unsuccessful. Nathan Schultz catches him on the off the break. Drops down, pops back to his feet. Now we're back in the clinch position. Nathan Schultz controlling Rashid Magomedov's right wrist with his left hand. Got the right underhook. It'll be interesting to see how these judges' scorecards play out. That point taken. Maybe it won't matter. Nathan Schultz, 1 minute and 56 seconds away, potentially from becoming PFL's lightweight champion and a million dollar winner. Controlling this fight with Rashid Magomedov's back to the fence and the clinch. Rashid's got the hooks, but he tr goes for a trip on Nathan Short. Nathan doesn't go for it, reverses it. Now he has Rashid back to the fence. 90 seconds left in this lightweight title fight. These guys could be in a tie right now. That's what the commentators are saying. And if that's the case, that one point's really going to matter. Nathan Schultz controlling this fight against the fence with 60 seconds left. Landing inside knees. Michael Mado was saying, he's gesturing like, yo, he's not doing nothing. But right after that, it made Nathan Schultz scramble, and he kind of slipped off, but he's right back in the clinch. Nathan Schultz really doing a lot of control in this fight in the clinch. Not really successful with the, the judo throws in the clinch. Not able to keep Rashid down, but able to at least control him against the fence. We'll see if that's enough. Rashid Magomedov looking to land an uppercut here. Breaks away for a second. 15 seconds left. Nathan Schultz goes for the trip. Unsuccessful, but pops up and lands a right hand. Five seconds left. We will see what the judges' scorecards say. One point taken away, though. That could be a very costly point. Trying to roll a few J's Watch TV type on this is Cam Murphy. Schultz got this clear winner, says CFR Sports. Schultz going to be the million-dollar new PFL lightweight champion. Next, though, coming up right now, is the two-time, two-time, two-time 
Olympic gold medalist Kayla Harris, and she's going to be coming up. I didn't know if it was going to be the main event or what they were doing, but they just announced before this fight's coming up next. That's what that's what we're here for. You know what I'm saying? But we do still got three more fights coming up after that. Let's see. Next fight we got coming up, of course, Kayla Harrison versus, um, I forget her name. But I was looking at this light heavyweight title fight, Vinny Magalhaes versus Sean O'Connell. Another one of those fights where I'm sure Ovint St. Pru and the boys are looking at these guys like, yo, I should be winning a million dollars. Even though Vinny Magalhaes is a beast. But some of these UFC guys. Yo. After this Kayla Harrison fight, <clears throat> we might watch these two heavy. We'll probably watch these two heavyweight fights. But I'm about to run downstairs. I think there's some people here. See what's going on down there. But there's no way we're missing Harrison's third pro fight. Commercial break. In the meantime, in between time. Simp segment? Fuck it, simp segment. Mm, Instagram, no simp segment. Instagram.com cannot be reached. All right. You made us do it. You made us do it. You on you on J Check's teammate. Mute. Unmute in the intermission. Kayla Harrison's about to be fighting. Defending her future crown. You on J Check's teammate. Be careful, be careful, Valentina. They're saying you're pretty confident, but hearing MMA I ain't the one that you want a problem with, so stop it, bitch. Or you wanna gon' have to drop a bitch. I ain't about to lose and go out like my homegirl Rhonda did. But speaking of losing, how about you and Amanda Nunes? She beat you twice and for this fight, she's teaching I'm the student, never truant. Cause I really wanna beat you, I'ma do it when I do. Please don't go to the media with excuses. I know you beat me in Muay Thai, but this is different. This is more than throwing punches. Just knees and kicks and clinching This is more like war These motherfucking chicks is vicious And anything goes I don't fear any of these hoes Not even Rose Tatiana just can drive Oh shit Nathan won Song's over We don't gotta hear the chorus But my uh, We're still behind Mine's still on commercial They're still announcing it But I seen that in the chat Nathan Shoot You guys hear that? A little bit of a delay on my screen. Tears of joy from Nathan Schultz, Schultz's wife. PFL's new champion and million dollar winner. Nathan Schultz. It's not Nathan. I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Nathan Schultz. He's Brazilian. Nathan Show, winner of a million dollars, man. These dudes, this is, I mean, I'm sure they want to be the champion, but, man, that million dollars is crazy. PFL crowning new champions. That time, I'm being presented with the belt, a million dollars. Got the PFL million dollar check. They're translating now, speaking Brazilian. I said he speaks a little English. 
<laughs> Thank you, New York. Nathan Show. Thanking everyone. Now I speak in Portuguese. Lil Blake Griffin. <laughs> we got the light heavyweights coming up, the heavyweights, and then of course the welterweights after Kayla Harrison versus man, I had her name Sharneski. Sharnoski. That's not the important part. He said he never fought for money. He said, I'm taking this because I love fighting, but I'll take the money too. A lot of the champions are talking about how the belt means more than the money. Okay. I'm not buying it, but, I, but still, it sounds good. Vinny Magalhaes taking on Sean O'Connell. Next million dollar title fight. Alright, we gotta listen to some um, UFC Yankovic post-fight speech. You're probably not gonna call out anybody that we, we really know, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna do another playoff bracket next year for each division. Alright, so... Let's play another one that we haven't heard in a while. Wonder Boy. <laughs> Cam Murphy said I wouldn't give a shit about the belt. Show me the fucking money. <laughs> Here comes Wonder Boy to I'm with Liverpool you. so proudly. He's got to shut till up cause he done called him out. See, nothing much to say when you know you're gonna fuck till up. Yeah, yeah. Wonder Boy. Your karate's too much for his power. Wonder Boy, won't you please go and save the day and go fuck till up? Yo, my boy J Skill says proper twelve got bad reviews. Yo, that was crazy. They got some terrible reviews. Um, they sound like a bunch of haters though. But yeah, no, seriously, that was a good point, Cam Murphy. They should, they should have like cases suitcases with the million dollars but of course taxes and a lot of stuff but yeah they should have definitely had it for a show like a million dollars on the table that would have been way more lit jameson is better at least now says j skills uh, i think it might be a little more expensive too but yeah i mean i'm sure i, I don't think see proper 12 taking over jameson with those bad reviews and and, and, and like connor was hoping but it's still doing great business Sure, we are on commercial break over here. Oh, they're doing ha, it's funny, they're doing a commercial for proper 12 right now. All right, guys, I'm gonna ask you because I mean, I, I'm I mean, New Year's these fights are gonna be over before New Year's Eve, so we can watch the full card. But do you guys want to watch the full PFL um, event? If y'all ain't doing shit else, we can. Or do y'all just want to watch the Kayla Harrison Charneski fight and, and phew, boom, get to your New Year's Eve festivities? You guys let me know because I know there's no way we're missing the Kayla Harrison fight. But the rest of these fights, you know what I'm saying? You know, we, we can check the results. We can check the results. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't coming into this event like, oh shit, I can't wait for the fucking Sean O'Connell and Felipe Lenz fights. Like, that wasn't, you know what I'm saying? I would like to see Ray Cooper versus Magomed, Magomed, Karamo, but, you know, it's New Year's Eve. It's New Year's Eve. 
You can't even buy it in the UK to see if our sports. Okay, okay. I didn't know you couldn't buy it in the UK. Is it because it's sold out or can you just not buy it? Kayla Harrison in the back. Here we go. You guys can't hear this, right? Oh, you can't even mute it. That's what we're talking about. It's the motherfucking two time. Somebody's arm is getting detached. We're going to have a disarmament coming up. Just Kayla says Mr. Perfect 2005 already rolled up for Kayla. Oh, yeah, I already rolled up for Kayla, too. Right after they announced this first round submission, we're firing up. We'll chop it up with the chat, and yeah, we'll get out of here. We had the first round knockout from Louis Taylor. That was dope. Kayla Harrison, I want to see what the hype is about, says Jay Skills. Oh, yeah, it's not hype. Remove Lizard says, just here for Kayla. My motherfucking dogs. That's what I thought. That's what I was thinking. I was like, well, you know, if the family wants to watch the full card, we can, we can, cool. But I'm really just here for Kayla. Just can't buy it, says CFR Sports. Interesting. I wonder why not. Luis Taylor was the middleweight champion. Lance Palmer, featherweight champion. Nathan Schultz, lightweight champion. By what, proper 12 in England? Surely they can get it now. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm surprised you can't get it yet. Going over the results earlier. The million dollar winners and the current PFL champions. Can y'all drop that kunk in the chat one more time? Yo, full-time MMA, how does a person get a wrench? All the people that have wrenches are um, people that fucking have been around since the very beginning of the channel and black belts. But you got your black belt, so... Well, you got your brown belt, which is pretty close. But, yeah, that's that's all the people that are um, people with wrenches. People that have been around since before our name was even full-time MMA, like the people that were here day one, A1, day one, and also the full-time MMA black belts get a, get the wrench. But, um, I mean, you, you, you know, you be around, so I'm sure you'll have one before too long. I'm sure you'll have a wrench by your name. Not ain't seen it, says CFR Sports. Two-time, two-time, two-time Olympic gold medalist in judo, Kayla motherfucking Harrison. I think her nickname should be two-time. Kayla two-time Harrison. Let's go. J Skill's been a day one or there's loads of us. Moriel, the machine, Charneski. About to get disarmed tonight. CFR Sports says Tesco's the main distributor, and it ain't here. They need to get a motherfucking Tesco in the UK, it sounds like. That's crazy. You can't, like, ship no crates. I don't I don't know how that shit works. You can't distribute no shit in a boat, in a sea, in a plane, nowhere. Can't order that shit online. Mario Charneski. She says, I fought a few high-caliber opponents. I do expect her to be the highest. Ken Murphy says, we're only an hour by sea to England. That makes no sense. Yeah, you can't just, like, put that shit on a boat. Well, Sharnowski says, Kayla Harrison's never fought a fighter with these angles and movement and these types of things. Oh, shit, she thinks she's going to bring that the angles and, and, and movement to the fight. She thinks it's going to be a grind and a war. She thinks she's going to wear Kayla Harrison out and she's going to get frustrated. And that's where she's going to win. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Mario Charneski, but tonight, oh, your arms are real flexible. That's all I can say.
I hope your arms are real motherfucking flexible. And I hope you got health insurance because that motherfucker might be coming home with Kayla. We'll see. Kayla Harrison getting ready to walk out. Mario Sharneski is in the back, already in the cage. Oh, Kayla Harrison getting the Olympic gold medal. They're showing the highlights. Oh, Kayla Harrison with the submission win arm bar over Brittany Elkins. Kim Bruce says, I got Kayla hoping she wins for me. No, it ain't for me. If she loses, I mean, it is going to be crazy. I don't think she will, though. But, I mean, I'm hoping she wins. I'm not even hoping she wins. I just think. I just know she's going to win. I might be wrong, but I don't feel like I'm personally invested in this. I just feel like it's facts. I feel like it's like if we knew John Jones or Demetrius Johnson was going to be who they are. Would you watch? It's it's like Aaron Pico. Do you miss Aaron Pico fights? That's exactly what this kind of reminds me of is Aaron Pico. I don't miss Aaron Pico fights. Well, potentially, this is a dude that has the potential to do something Daniel Cormier did. Even though he's got that one loss, he's got so much potential and talent. I, well, I don't miss Aaron Pico fights. I don't miss Kayla Harrison fights. And tonight, that's what that is. Leon Dobson says, I'm down. Two-time Harrison has a great ring to it. Two-time, two-time, two-time Harrison. Continuing to work on my fight work, fighting. Continuing to work on my footwork. Continuing to work on little things like head movement. Do you think Kayla Harrison doesn't think everyone's going to be looking for her head movement? That's probably one of the things she works the hardest on. Y'all don't realize what American Top Team and what they bring to the table. People, they're just, I feel like they're missing it. Imagine a fighter training with American Top Team a full year before they make their debut. And they've already got like a, some wrestling skills. Like, they're going to be a beast. If you throw him into a shark tank in the UFC, it's different. But Kayla Harrison's not getting thrown into a shark tank. Where's the stream, says Mr. Perfect 2005. Yo. Let me see if I can get it. It's on VIP League. And just go to VIP League and click UFC, and it's right there. That's what I did. Or you can go to NBC Sports. NBC Sports. Oh, shit. She's walking out to that I am unstoppable. I am unbreakable shit. Uh-oh. Harrison versus Charneski. Charneski's got that reach advantage. Oh, shit. Sharnesky has a five inch reach advantage. If she ain't got if Kayla Harrison don't got no head movement, that could be a problem, right guys? Right? Here we go. Joe Martinez is about to introduce this fight. Where's the special event? Well, you ain't got well, you maybe have it on this screen. You gotta have that on the screen. There we go. Wrestler standing five feet eight inches tall. Mario Sharneski, hailing from Austin, Texas. The Machine, Mario Sharneski, eleven amateur fights, but turning pro. Look what the fuck they done with Amanda for fuck's sake! Come on, they're the top. Oh, yeah, American Top Team, they ain't never been fucking around. Mer Amanda Nunes, I mean, look, they got Nina Ansarov from the top 15 all the way up, and she's in the top five now. She just beat Claudia Gadea. They got, say, even if you don't like their fighters, Colby Covington, one of the top contenders, beat Damian Maya, beat a lot of these dudes up there. Um, 
Tyron Woodley, I mean, just monster after monster. Where's Kamaru Usman train? I know I don't know if he I don't think he trains with the American top team, but he's a fucking savage too. Here we go, ready to fight, ready to motherfucking fight. Let's go. Here we go, here we go. Go, oh, come on, I can't miss the fight. Come on. Oh. Right off the bat. Striking of Sharnansky. But ooh, Kayla already got the motherfucking judo throw. Transitions into the mount. Kayla Harrison already on top. Oh, she's raining down the ground and pound. She's raining it down. Sharnesky's trying to buck her off, but good luck. Good luck, baby girl. You got a world future world champion on top of you. Oh, she still got the full mount. This is how you keep the fight down. That other dude that was fighting, he had some judo, but he wasn't able to keep his opponent down like this. Sharnesky trying to hold on for dear life. She's trying to pull Kayla Harrison down. Kayla's like, all right, I got you. I'm going to slip out of here, and when I do, you know it's problems. I'm raining down with heat. And if you too caught, if you ain't too careful, I'm gonna snatch your fucking arm, and I'm going home with it. Kayla Harrison landed some big ground and pound. Never been fucking around. Bow, bow, posturing up and landed some heavy shit. Landed some heavy shit. Might be a TKO if this girl don't do something different. Kayla Harrison still in top position, rolling over, about to give up her back. Got to be careful. She's throwing them arms out there. Kayla Harrison can't wait to snatch one. Careful. Kayla Harrison looking to open her up and land some more of this ground and pound. Land some more big shots. Controlling one of her wrists with one of her hands. Just in top position, just dominating this girl. I mean, really. We're talking about future world champion shit. Uh, people are going to say this is a Mitch match. Not if you look at the record. Oh, yeah. No, she's got this girl wrapped up, arm pinned around her own face and just punching her. This is some Valentina Shevchenko versus Priscilla Cachoeira type shit right here. Seriously. Now she's looking for a potential Kimura attempt from the top. Oh, more shots from the top. Sharneski, man, she would have been better off just giving up her arm. She's getting fucking um, Khabib out here. This is another Khabib-like performance. Fucking just ragdoll in top position, raining down punches. I mean, she, she's not only looking for, clearly she's not only looking for the arm, she's willing to stay in the top and, and throw shots. Oh, Mario Charnevsky tries to roll out in reverse, but now she's giving Kayla Harrison her back. Kayla Harrison has the body triangle locked in. She's in top, hips are a little high. But she's going to, she's still really strong, working on a potential arm bar here, Kayla Harrison. She's working on Charnevsky's arm, trying to grab it, but she's got one hook in on her back. Now she sits on top, she stands up, Kayla Harrison does, and it's a nice shot to the body, and she's looking to try and snap Mario Charnesky back down. Huge Joe Judo toss gets Charnesky down on her back and inside control. Oh my shit, the pressure. The fucking pressure this girl is putting on poor Mario Charnesky. And I'm not saying poor, like she don't she she's uh, seven pro fights, eleven amateur fights. But, man, that's what Kayla Harrison is doing. This is Khabib Valentina Shevchenko-esque right here. Now she's working for the arm bar from the bottom. And you know she's strong. Be careful. She's working for it. But, Sharnesky, she's trying to stay. She'd rather Kayla Harrison have her back than give up that arm. So, Kayla Harrison takes her back. Kayla Harrison now reaching for a rear naked choke. Now ground and pound. Now she's landing shots over the top. Try, oh, and she's, yep, she's got her back. The ref might stop this fight any second. Shots over the top. The f Stop the fight. Kevin McDonald has seen enough. <laughs> the fuck I be talking about? That's what the fuck I be talking about? Hey, hey, hey. Something's going on on the screen. It should be. What am I hearing on my screen? Is that the fights? Oh, yeah. Holy smokes. The pressure. Jay Skill says, can Harrison make 145? Oh, yeah. Give her to Tyler Minton. You know what I'm saying? She can. She's going to have to work for it, but she can. She's a big girl, and that's what I'm saying. That's part of the whole hype, people call it. This is a big girl with some legitimate skills. Pressure. That looked like Khabib. Did you see Valentina Shevchenko versus Priscilla Cachoeira? Because that's what that looked like to me. 
She's training with the American top team. She's not a one-trick pony only looking for an arm bar. She's got head movement, head kicks. Outside leg kicks we saw in her last fight. When she isn't fucking judo throwing you on your fucking back through the sky. And her top game, she keeps you down and she's putting the ground and pound on you. And if she wasn't posturing up and throwing all that ground and pound, you probably would have been there the whole fight. On your back. What are we talking about height? That's pressure. That's motherfucking Olympic level pressure. Two time gold medal. Let's go, says Remove Lizard. She just fights amateur, says Alejandra Chervez Murga. Cyborg Nation all time. Hey, Miss Cyborg lasted um, three seconds longer than Ronda Judo Rousey. And Kayla Harrison's way better than Ronda Rousey. So, I mean, if Cyborg turns it around, gets back on the winning train. She might be in line for a future fight with the future GOAT, Kayla Harrison. But as of right now, Kayla Harrison's path is clear. And as of right now, she don't even have to beat Cyborg to be the GOAT. If she really wants to be the GOAT, she's got to beat Amanda Nunes. You want to just get motherfucking facts? We want to talk motherfucking facts right now. If Kayla Harrison wants to be the GOAT, which is why she's in this game, she has to beat Amanda Nunes. It ain't Cyborg no more. She got in this shit to be the GOAT, not to beat Cyborg, to be the GOAT. And Cyborg's no longer the GOAT. I rock with Cyborg, I'm a fan of Cyborg, I'm not a Cyborg simp. I'm real with it. Unbiased. I don't give a damn about no interview with Kayla Harrison. Uh, I ain't trying to get one with Cyborg. I don't want one with none of no, no. I don't give a damn about an interview with the fighter. If you want to interview with me, what's up, more, let's do it. I would love to interview you, but I'm not going to... You know what I'm saying? Change my what I'm saying, you know, because I want to interview with somebody. Keep it real. And with that being said, I ain't got no, I don't have no horses in this race. I don't got no Kayla Harrison connect. I'm not, nothing like that. I'm not related to this chick. I just see the fucking potential. And what you're looking at right now, all the pressure in the world, too. Keep in mind. People talk about the views and the whatever, the whatever. How many views did John Jones have in his third fight? How many views did Cyborg have in his third pro fight? How many views did Valentina Shevchenko have in her third pro fight? How many views did Ronda Rousey have in her third pro fight? Oh yeah, no one gave a shit. Nobody's got eyes on them from the very beginning. Except Kayla Harrison, Aaron Pico, and you've seen the pressure got to Pico, Madison Square Garden. That loss on his record to Zach Freeman, man, he could he could beat that dude. Aaron Pico is a motherfucking monster. Another guy that's on my radar. I watch all of his fights because I see the potential, and I realize we're witnessing future greatness. I'm not in here hating on somebody because I'm a fan of somebody else. I'm in here being real. And when, when I'm being real, I'm telling you Kayla Harrison is a motherfucking problem, and she has been. This ain't about Cyborg versus Harrison, nothing like that. This is about Kayla Harrison. Ain't nobody thinking about Cyborg except for thinking about that knockout. Not not right now. This ain't about, and like I said, she don't have to beat Cyborg no more to be the GOAT. If she wants to be the GOAT, she's going to have to beat her teammate, Amanda Nunes. And since that's her teammate, she might just run it up to motherfucking 20 and 0. Let's listen to what she's got to say in this octagon, see if she calls anyone out. Hey guys, next year I'm going to be a motherfucking millionaire. But she didn't say motherfucking. Next year, she's going to be in the million, the UFC, not UFC. Next year, she's going to be in the PFL female lightweight tournament. Winner becomes the champion and gets a million dollars. But I wouldn't be surprised if Kayla Harrison's already got close. She's already got money. She ain't hurting for money. She's not in this because she needs money. I'm sure it would help. A million dollars will help anybody. A millionaire would like another million dollars. But Kayla Harrison is not hurting for money. And so with that being said, man, this ain't nothing but real. And Alejandro Chavez Murga, respect to you and respect to Cyborg Nation, but y'all ain't got no motherfucking business in this conversation because we're talking about the future GOAT. We ain't talking about the past GOAT. We ain't talking about one of the GOATs because, by the way, right now, I mean, Amanda Nunes did damage to Cyborg's legacy in that fight. If we want, if we want to keep it 100 and keep it real, Amanda Nunes did damage to Cyborg's legacy in that fight.
She did damage to it. Now Cyborg's not the GOAT anymore. Before, Cyborg was the GOAT, and then we had to talk about who was pound for pound. Okay, Valentina had two weight classes. She's pound for pound. Cyborg's the GOAT, though. Now Amanda Nunes is the GOAT, and she's pound for pound. Now Cyborg is just one of the greatest female fighters of all time. So, Kayla Harrison's on the way to also become one of the greatest fighters of all time. And unless she fights her teammate, I don't think we'll know. And honestly, I mean, yeah, I mean, I could make an argument Kayla Harrison could have a decent chance, and but I don't even want to entertain the thought of her having to fight her teammate. Come on, we don't ask that of any other fighter. You don't, you don't ask Valentina Shevchenko to fight Antonina Shevchenko. You don't ask John Jones to fight John Dodson. Come on. We, we don't ask teammates to fight each other. So, with that being said, if anybody hadn't seen seen the fight and didn't see that pressure, Cam Murphy said 51 seconds for great cyborg. And the, the coldest part about that, Cam Murphy is that she only lasted three seconds longer than Ronda Rousey. That's the coldest part. Because everyone talked about how bad Ronda Rousey's hands are and how bad her head movement is and how just terrible of a striker she was and how she got exposed. So, if Ronda Rousey is a terrible striker with no head movement that got exposed by Amanda Nunes, what does that make Cyborg, who only lasted three more seconds? So, people who want to jump on to hate Kayla Harrison, you really got to pump your brakes. You have to pump your brakes because you don't have many legs to stand on when Chris Cyborg only lasted three more seconds than R Ronda Judo Rousey. Because Kayla Harrison's better than Ronda Rousey, and I tell you this, I'll bet my next motherfucking three checks Kayla Harrison would last more than three seconds with Amanda, 50, 51 seconds with Amanda Nunes today. You put Kayla Harrison in there with Amanda Nunes today. She's lasting longer than 51 seconds. Today. She can circle out the octagon longer than 51 seconds. She's probably going to be a little stronger. Maybe get a little clinch going on. You can clinch up for 51 seconds. So... You can come in here, but tonight's not the night. Not after we just saw Kayla Harrison's dominance continue to, to, to prevail. And not after the weekend that we just saw. Kayla upset low, but she didn't break a sweat. Female Khabibi. That's what I'm talking about, Elite XXL. Smash that middle, that thumbs up button like your middle name is Kayla Harrison. <laughs> Remove Lizard to Cyborg, charging against Nunes reminds me of when Cat charged Ronda Rousey. Exactly. Bad mistake. You you discounted your opponent's skills and you got caught. Cam Murphy said, who you got? I'm going with Sean O'Connell. Fight coming up. We got the next fight coming up. Fuck it. We're going to watch Vinny Magalhaes versus Sean O'Connell. I got Vinny Magalhaes. I got Vinny Magalhaes. Gonna be a good fight though. Ronda didn't drop, did she? Says Ronda Rousey, or says Elite XXL. Kayla Harrison just reminds me of a bigger Ronda Rousey. She's a bigger and better Ronda Rousey because she wasn't just a bronze medalist, she's a gold medalist, and her striking's way better. And yeah, her top game, I mean, you could say is way better. The way she postures up and rains shots down. I mean, she's shown that she can keep a girl down. She's shown that she can f have the submission. She can TKO girls. She's not a one-trick pony, and she's a lot bigger and a lot better with a lot better fight team. This is Ronda Rousey 2.0. I'm talking in a better version. This is the Ronda Rousey that stood a chance with Cyborg, and after this weekend, there's no question about that. 2020 is more clear than ever. <coughs> if you don't think, oh, yeah. Y'all got not a good, this is not a good weekend for Cyborg Nation, but that's okay. Y'all are going to bounce back. I'm still a fan of Cyborg, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not a Cyborg simp. And when people make me draw a line in the sand on this Kayla Harrison topic, I love Cyborg every every day, big fan. But don't, don't draw a line in the sand because it's Team Kayla Harrison over here. And...
if, and we're t if we're gonna stay on Cyborg and Harris, come on, you you y'all seen the interview? They asked, Coach even asked, you know, what's up with Kayla Harris and Sean? Who? Kayla who? You know who? Don't do that. You know who we talking about? Cam Murphy said she's Ronda 3.0. That's what we're talking about. All right, is this fight going? We're gonna watch another fight. We're gonna watch. We're gonna watch this. We might even watch the heavyweight fight. That was a good fight. Ronda got hit clean and did the zombie walk. The cyborg walk said Elite XXL. No, he didn't say it. Only three pro fights in full time. Only right now. She's gonna have about five more next year. She'll be eight and zero, and she'll be looking sitting there looking real pretty like Tatiana Suarez, eight and zero, ready to fight the champ. And is she gonna win? I think Kayla Harrison has a better chance of becoming a champion at eight and and Tatiana Suarez because the competition level. Who's gonna be the UFC featherweight champion when if Kayla Harrison goes there? Megan Anderson is Cyborg still gonna be in the UFC? So she can for sure challenge for the title at eight and if she went to the UFC in twenty twenty. Only three pro fights in and She's trained with a American top team for a full year before she had her first fight. Still got the judo background, motivation. Fuck you, Tom Matt. But now it's time for Vinny Magalhaes for Sean O'Connell. Let's see if it's ready for the fight clock. Nope, not quite yet. Let me get back to it. Where we got the fights? Right here. They're walking in the cage now. But, yeah, guys, I think after this fight, we're going to shut it down. You know, Happy New Year's to everybody. That was a dope fight. We got to see Kayla Harrison's third pro fight. And then if Coach is streaming tonight, I'll probably pop in there. You know what I'm saying? Because I need to know how they're going to explain this one, what they're going to hate on, what they're going to say about the fight, what they're going to say about the competition, what they're going to say about the ground and pound. I need to see how the Harrison haters are going to react tonight. And I got to go, you know, show some love to the coach. So, I think he's going to be live tonight. I'll probably check him out. But, yeah, after this light heavyweight title fight, we're going to see if Vinny Magalhaes or Sean O'Connell wins this million dollars and this light heavyweight title. And then we're going to shut it down the stream. And if, you, you know, we keep watching the fights, you can. You know, I'm just going to check the results a little later. It's New Year's Eve. I'm going to go, you know what I'm saying, shut it down for the night. Try and see what I'm doing tonight. Probably nothing crazy, but if I'm doing anything. Might fuck around and make the liquor store if they're not closed. That would be stupid if the liquor store was closed early on New Year's Eve. That would be a bad business decision. Saying this is the number one submission specialist from Rio de Janeiro. Very good points, J says Jay Skills. Yeah, man. I'm not... I'm not just blinded by the light. I'm I'm real about it. I'm not just Kayla Harrison simped out. I'm not looking for a pair of Kayla Harrison's fucking fight shorts. Oh, ain't going back and forth with you niggas. I'm living my best life. Oh, George Page with the $2 in the super chat. Salute to George Page. Thank you very much, good sir. That is much appreciated. You see that fight, man? You see that, you see that two-time pressure? All right, this fight started. Let's get to commentator. Thank you again, George Page, for the two in the super chat, man. That is much appreciated. All right, fight clock on the screen. We're watching Vinny Magalhaes versus Sean O'Connell for the light heavyweight title and a million dollars. High kick thrown by Magalhaes. Just missed. Sean O'Connell comes in afterward with a hook attempt, and Vinny Magalhaes pulls guard. Oh, shit. Comes down looking for a heel hook. He's got Sean O'Connell's heel now. He's looking for a submission. He's got his leg. This is, they said, one of the best uh, submission artists in, in Brazil. Vinny Magalhaes, beast. He's got looking for the heel hook attempt here. Landing a shot. Oh, he's rolling on it. So that might not be good for Sean O'Connell. Oh, he's able to reverse the position. But Vinny Magalhaes fighting off his back with the up kick attempt. Sean O'Connell, though, he's in top position, but he's got to be careful because Vinny Magalhaes is attacking off his back with triangle attempts, up kicks, all type of shit. Active off his back. Sean O'Connell letting him back up. You guys are back to standing. These guys are getting nasty. Oh, nice little jab from Vinny Magalhaes. But Sean O'Connell lands a nice left hook, right hand, left hook. 
Sean O'Connell coming forward with some heat. These guys are fucking banging right now. Right hand, left hand from Vinny Magalhaes. Bust open the eye of Sean O'Connell. Now Vinny Magalhaes in on a double leg attempt. Unsuccessful so far with it. Looking to lock his hands. But Vin Sean O'Connell working on an underhook. Working on the underhook. Vinny Magalhaes, if he's got his hands locked, he'll be able to secure this takedown. Anytime you got your hands locked under the butt, takedown secured. Yep, hands were locked, got the takedown. Now he's looking to take Sean O'Connell's back. Sean O'Connell trying to stand up, giving Vinny Magalhaes his back. He's giving him a lot of positions for this guy to be so good at jiu-jitsu. Um, you don't want to give him your back and give him these triangle um, attempts. Now, even when he was in top position, the ground and pound was dangerous. Vinny Magalhaes is a big jiu-jitsu artist. You know, usually you don't see light heavyweights this slick with their jiu-jitsu. Vinny Magalhaes landed hammer fist against the fence on top of Sean O'Connell, just making him wear his weight right now. Looking to land some shots, but also conserving his energy. Vinny Magalhaes figured, thinking about the best way to find a submission, flattens out Sean O'Connell here. Trying to land some big shots off, the, on, off his back. He's in backpack position, both hooks locked in, flattens out Sean O'Connell. Looking for the rear naked choke, he might have it under the chin, but there's an arm in the way. Arm is in the way, he's okay, he says. Thumbs up to the ref, Vinny Magalhaes is still working. You do not want to be here with two minutes left and somebody this good at jujitsu on your back. If you don't know what you're doing on the ground, so Sean O'Connell showing good defense so far, but now he's eating a few big shots. Got a big heavyweight on your back slugging these shots down. You're going to open up your neck. I mean, he's throwing some heavy shots here. A minute and 34 seconds left. Oh, Sean O'Connell now falls backward with Vinny Magalhaes on his back. Vinny Magalhaes has in the body lock. He's busted Sean O'Connell open a little bit. It's a dominant round so far for Vinny Magalhaes on the ground here. Still in top position. Sean O'Connell now rolls. Still with Vinny Magalhaes on his back with the body lock in. Just riding him, landing shots over the top. Good ground and pound here from Vinny Magalhaes. Now Sean O'Connell stands up, and Vinny Magalhaes drops down for a leg lock attempt. As soon as Sean O'Connell stands up, Vinny Magalhaes is going back down to let this leg lock attempt. Sean O'Connell try having to try and defend this take this submission attempt. Thirty five seconds left. Vinny Magalay is still in on this. I wonder if that counts as a takedown. It probably doesn't. But now the fighters are down, and Vinny Magalay is working on this leg lock attempt. Sean O'Connell trying to sit up and defend this submission, doing a good job. Twenty seconds left. He's got the leg in his armpit. He's really working for this submission. Sean O'Connell doing a good job of defending though. Ten seconds left in the round. Sean O'Connell probably not going to get submitted. I think this round is Vinny Magalhaes' for sure, though. Good round for Vinny Magalhaes. Happy New Year, Stamin MC said, It's the bright light from the big city. Happy New Year past midnight. Crew them. Yo, Happy New Year, Stamin MC. Just missed the Kayla Harrison domination. You're going to definitely have to go back and watch that if you missed it. Salute to Stamina MC. I was watching something better, Game of Thrones. It's not new Game of Thrones. There's no way it's better than watching history. You're watching history in the making. What if Kayla Harrison goes on to be 18-0, beats Chris Cyborg, Amanda Nunes turns on AT&T because she's a creanch, and then she has to fight... Um, Kayla Harrison, Kayla Harrison beats Cyborg and Amanda Nunes. You, you're not going to be able to say you watch both of those, all of these fights. Like I said, man, you got to be on the right side of history. Kayla Harrison's got a lot of potential. Welcome, Kayla Harris. Simp says George Page. <laughs> George Page says we're gonna hate on Kayla till we can't hate no more. <laughs> I can't wait. I hope Coach has a stream today. I got to hear how he's going to explain this one. I need to hear the panel, how they're going to explain this one. All right, fight clock on the screen. Round two underway. 
Lenny Macaleus versus Sean O'Connell for the PFL inaugural light heavyweight belt and a million dollars. Ooh, slugs being thrown from Sean O'Connell. He just dropped Vinny Magalhaes with the left hook. Vinny Magalhaes trying to recover with the submission attempt. Boy, he was getting rocked on the feet there for a second. Sean O'Connell should let him stand up. Here he is. He, Vinny Magalhaes, he might, his eggs might still be a little scrambled right now. Sean O'Connell was swinging some fucking hooks in there. If any Magalhaes in on a single leg attempt, Sean O'Connell straight out. Let him stand back up. Let him stand back up. Letting him up. <clears throat> Sean O'Connell eats a body kick there. If any Magalhaes lands a body kick. If any Magalhaes in on a single leg attempt. But it looks like he eats a big hook there before that. Sean O'Connell is not wanting to go to the ground with him. Let's him stand up again. Trying to swing these hooks out there. He knows this dude wants these submission attempts. He's going to try and land these hooks. Ooh, right hook, left hook from Sean O'Connell. Right hook staggers Vinny Magalhaes back. Left hook drops Vinny Magalhaes, makes him shoot for a single leg attempt. Oh, Sean O'Connell able to stay on top. Still got to be careful. Vinny Magalhaes working for the leg. Throwing like a damn triangle attempt up on his leg for a potential like leg lock. Sean O'Connell, though, <clears throat> having a good, uh, strong second round. Gets his way out of the leg lock. He's going to choose to let Vinny Magalhaes back up. <clears throat> Sean O'Connell pressing forward. Vinny Magalhaes just mentions on a left hook. Now he's in on a single leg attempt. Sean O'Connell with a good sprawl. Pushing his head down. Gonna let him stand back up. Vinny Magalhaes, he keeps shooting for these takedown attempts. We know that's where he wants to be. He don't seem to like where the hands have been going with Sean O'Connell. Nice right hook, left hook from Vinny Magalhaes. Kick looked like it was blocked. Shooting for the takedown attempt. Good sprawl from Sean O'Connell. And letting him back up again. Ooh, good right hand over the top. From Vinny Magalhaes. Another big right hook, left hook from Vinny Magalhaes. Oh, big left hand lands from Sean O'Connell. Another one drops Vinny Magalhaes and he's reaching for a single. This dude's getting dropped and reaching for singles here. Now Sean O'Connell over the top looking to land some shots. He's got Vinny Magalhaes is back. Looking to land some ground and pound. He's just going to let him stand up. The corner telling him to let him stand up. He lets him up. Oh, good left hook lands from Sean O'Connell. Ooh, now Vinny Magalhaes in on a double leg attempt. Sean O'Connell sprawling. Not a good look for Vinny Magalhaes. These almost feel like desperation takedown attempts because he's getting clipped up a little on the feet. <clears throat> we will see. Vinny Magalhaes still in on a single. Happy New Year's! I'll be down there soon. I'm watching this last fight. If you're going to be here. Oh, okay, okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Happy New Year. Okay. Oh, okay. I appreciate it. All right. Champagne and some beers. Hey, y'all might want to watch the rest of the fights? I'll go get some beers. I'm thirsty as a motherfucker. Looks like I'm missing the festivities anyway. Sean O'Connell, top position. Landed some hammer fists. I think this is Sean O'Connell's round. Not even close. He's looking good. Both fighters might be slowing down. These are heavyweights. They got to go five rounds. They haven't. None of them, neither one of them have fought five rounds in, in a long time, if ever. Vinny Magalhaes still shooting for this desperation single. Sean O'Connell landing shots over the top. Definitely about to go grab a beer. I'm thirsty as a mug. Oh, I didn't like the blunt for Kayla Harrison. After this round, I'm going to grab a beer and we got to fire up. Yeah, this round of Sean O'Connell's. Vinny Magalhaes isn't doing much of anything. Just reaching for the single. Not much activity at all. Good round for Sean O'Connell. Happy New Year, everyone. This is Scott Yandel. Hell yeah.
Happy New Year, you turncoat. <laughs> I'm not turning. Don't make me draw the line in the sand. <laughs> I'll be right back. I gotta go grab a beer, guys. Not yet. Ow! Fuck! I just stubbed my toe on the corner. We good. We good. All right, guys. I miss anything. I miss anything. Light heavyweight fight. Man, it was getting hot as fuck, bro. I had like two sweaters on and shit. Here we go. Round's about to start. Ready to fight? Ready to fight? That fight clock on the screen. Crack this brewski. Bow, 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 bow. Boom. Lighters up. Get your lighters up. What you know about Snoop Lion? Oh, these guys are banging. These are the light heavyweight sluggers. Oh, shit. Motherfucking Vinny Magalhães with the body kick. Oh, coming with the hook over the top. Sean O'Connell pressing forward like a motherfucking zombie. He might be rocked, but he's still coming forward. Vinny Magalhães says, you know what? Fuck these desperation takedowns. I'm going to stand with him. Right hand, left hand from Sean O'Connell. Vinny Magalhães going down. Left hand reaching for a single. Sean O'Connell says, I realize he's hurt. Fuck this letting him stand up. I'm just going to try and finish him. Got to be careful, though. Oh, big left hand over the top. He's going to let him stand up. He wants to stand and strike with him. This is where Vinny Magalhães is going to start shooting for these takedowns because Sean O'Connell's boxing is just fucking cleaning him up right now. That jab from Sean O'Connell. That jab, he's getting confident. Oh, he's trying to unload. Big left hand. That was the R2 button right there. Single leg attempt from Vinny Magalhães. Vinny Magalhães, man, spending a lot of energy on these takedowns. Oh, I got a hole in the blunt. We got to flute it. We got to flute it. Sean O'Connor with the right and the left. Vinny Magalhães dives in on the single, and he's really just trying to recover and rest, it feels like. Round three of five. Now, this is way different than Dotto 5000 and Kim, Kimbo because the skill level. But as far as the cardio, it's going to be interesting to see what we see in this fight. These guys haven't had to fight five rounds through the PFL season. This is the first five-round fight of the season. Let's see if we can fix that. Sean O'Connor trying to pick apart Vinny Magalhães against the fence. Vinny Magalhães reaching for the single. Sean O'Connor's looking good. Letting Vinny Magalhães back up. He's tired. Wash, rinse, repeat. Outside leg kick lands from Vinny Magalhães. Gets clipped with the left hand, right uppercut. Left hook, left jab, left right hand, left hand. Drops Vinny Magalhães, who falls in on a single leg attempt. The story of the fight. Vinny Magalhães keeps getting dropped into a single leg. Sean O'Connor's going to let him up. One of these times, he's going to stay down, I think. Ref letting him up. There we go. Oh, left hook to the body from Sean O'Connell. Now left hook to the chin. Pushes him over. Vinny Magalhães looks a little hurt. Reaching for the single. Sean O'Connell said, let's get back up. Vinny is gassed, and this is only a minute 48 seconds left in the round. And there's two more rounds. Sean O'Connor looking to land 
looking to engage this time. Trying to land some ground and pound from the top instead of just letting them stand up. Benny Maglias tries to throw up a uh, desperation triangle. Sean O'Connell's out of it and says, let's stand up. They stand, stand back up. Right hand from Sean O'Connell. Right hand, left hand to the chin of Vinny Magalayas. Left hand drops Vinny Magalayas into a single leg attempt. On his back. Referee stands him up. Ooh, head kick there from Vinny Magalayas. Right hand. Good body shot from Sean O'Connell. One good shot, man. This fight can be over. He just dropped him. Might is it over? Not quite. Yeah, the ref's probably going to stop the fight soon. Sean O'Connell now has Vinny Magalayas back to the fence, landing some shots, some ground and pound, and the ref's looking close. Oh, armbar tipped. Holy shit. It's deep. Oh, Sean O'Connell got out, but holy fuck, he threw that out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. 24 seconds left in the round. Vinny Magalhaes barely, barely has the strength and the energy to stand up. Oh, left hand. Left hand in on the single leg attempt. Oh, back on his back now. 10 seconds left in the round. Letting him stand up. Five seconds left. Vinny staggers back to his feet. Dog tire round is over. We got four rounds. Or, I mean, fourth round coming up. Championship rounds. He just whispered something to his corner. It's over. He's done. He whispered to his corner, said he was done. Might have fractured his orbital. He said, all right, you motherfuckers see me out here tired as dog shit. Y'all ain't gonna throw the corner in. Y'all want my heart to stop or some shit. I, hey, ba -ba boom, I'm done, homie. It is over. Woo, shit. Sean O'Connell just won a million dollars. And became PFL's light heavyweight champion. They just told him in the corner and he fucking cheered. Sean O'Connell just got married, came out of retirement. His wife is pregnant. Now they said he can buy him a house and shit. Storybook ending for Sean O'Connell. Vinny Magalayas. I know I, I heard about him coming into this fight. He was the number one seed. I even heard Joe Rogan mention him and him being talented and shit. So... <clears throat> Fucking big win for Sean O'Connell. Vinny Magalayas unable to answer the stand-up of Sean O'Connell. Unable to find the takedown. Unable to find the submission. Unable to find the arm bars, the leg locks. Definitely did not look like no Kayla Harrison out there. But big win for Sean O'Connell. Man, that was a good fight. That was one of the better fights of the night for sure. Cam Murphy says, you told you my boy Sean would win. You definitely got that one. Jay Skills says, reminds me of the Nick Diaz versus Paul Daly fight. Stephen MC says, if I was home, I'd be fine. Damn near everything, 24 hours, and ethnic folk around here. Don't ever take days off, <clears throat> but I'm in a hotel in Leeds. Just finished work. Quincy Panola in the building says, Conley needs to sleep, this dude. Hope his tank holds up. Yeah, man, we got to, I mean, you know what? We've made it this far. We're just going to watch these last two fights, you guys. Heavyweights and then Ray Cooper the third versus Magomed, Magomed, Karimo. We made it this far. We've came this far. Why stop now? You know what I'm saying? Okay, we're watching them. Fight clock off the screen until our next fight. Boy, you know what? I just thought about it. Cyborg Nation was probably hoping Kayla Harrison got knocked out in like 51 seconds this weekend. That's cold. That's cold. That's what they was hoping for. They did not want to see that domination and that pressure that was applied by the two-time gold medalist. Whew. Let's see if the coach is live. We might have to do a live look into coach's show if the coach is live. The coach show live. Let's see.
CSH Combat Sports. Oh, y'all want to listen to coaches? Let's listen to coach. We're gonna to listen to coach's PF. He's gonna give Kayla Harrison. I I think coach is gonna give Kayla Harrison his props, her props. I think he's gonna give her props. He just don't want to see her hyped up. That's my prediction. Uh, yeah, it's your boy. It's your boy, Coach Shelton Harrison. And you're live, live, live on the Coach Shelton Harrison Combat Sports Show live. Man, Kayla Harrison, Mario Chanosky. Who do you think won this fight? Who do you really think won this fight? You guys tell me. I mean, can you guess who won this fight? Of course you know who won this fight. Um, Kayla Harrison whooped Mario Chanosky's ass. Now listen, this is no disrespect to Chanosky. None whatsoever, okay? Um, she came in and she was a game opponent, okay? Chanosky was definitely a game opponent. And, you know, she was going in here to make this a tough fight, but... It just wasn't a tough fight for Kayla Harrison. I was shocked that this fight was even made. I was shocked that Kayla Harrison. It's going to be hard to find a tough fight for Kayla Harrison. Even took a step down an opponent. It's not about that. See? See? They can't do this. They can't do this. Did anybody say that when Valentina Shevchenko fought Priscilla Cachoeira? Come on. That's, a, that's not a on-level opponent. What's she supposed to do? Turn it, If you... Keep up with Kayla Harrison, her management, the PFL. They say it's hard to find her fights. Girls don't want to fight Kayla Harrison. They don't want to lose. Cyborg. I'm surprised she fought Yana Kuninskaya. I'm surprised, you know, she took a step down and, uh, on short notice, whatever the reason is. We can't talk about level of competition with a fighter that's 3-0 and when we have GOATs fighting amateurs. Chris Cyborg is fighting girls that are coming up from Invicta. Uh, Valentina Shevchenko fought Priscilla Cachoeira, was about to fight Nico Montano. Come on, this girl's 3-0. and We got to give her a chance. Okay, because she had that great, that wonderful victory, that flawless victory over Josette Cotton, and she took a step down. But, you know, also, too, there's levels to this, too, man. There's levels to this. And, um, you know, this girl, Chernoski, was game. She's very game, but it's just she wasn't on Kayla Harrison's level. Not on the ground anyway. Kayla Harrison said that she was going to strike. She Who tried is? to take some strikes, but the strikes, they just didn't look that good. I mean, it's just, it's going to take Kayla Harrison a long time. It's just striking is just not her game. That's not. Striking wasn't Ronda Rousey's game. And Chris Cyborg only lasted three seconds longer. So that says Ronda Rousey and Cyborg striking. I mean, if you just look on it on paper, it's pretty close. Literally, with the best striking in the world, she only lasted three seconds longer than a bronze medal judoka. I'm telling you, right now, today, Kayla Harrison would last longer than 51 seconds with Amanda Nunes, but they're teammates, so we don't have to talk, speculate. Not her. And All right, I, I want to listen to that later. But, um, but Coach, you know what I'm saying? He at least he said Sharnowski was a game opponent, and that's all you can ask for in your third pro fight. Sharnowski had eleven amateur fights before turning pro and having seven amateur fights. She had eighteen total fights, and Kayla Harrison's fighting her in her third pro fight. But we'll get back to that. Heavyweight fight might be title fight might be on. Oh nope, Sean O'Connell's post fight speech. We're going to tune in to The Coach, The Coach Show Live. Make sure you guys go subscribe to CSH Combat Sports, The Coach Show Live. And it's uncomfortable to her. And she threw these punches, and I'm like, what the hell? What, what, what is she throwing? What kind of punches are these? You know, but she tried. She made an attempt, but Kayla was like, forget that. Let me go on here and take her ass down. And that's what Kayla did. She took her to the ground and started whooping her ass, okay? Uh, she started grounding and pounding. Charnowski, though, she did a good job of actually getting back up. And I saw she turned, and I said, wait a minute, why is Charnowski giving Kayla her back? But what Charnowski yeah. did, she started sliding she down, okay? And y'all try to picture this, okay? She was sliding down, okay? Her back was to Kayla, and she started, like, actually shimmying through Kayla's legs, and she got back up. So I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, that's that's pretty nifty. You know, she did it. But, uh, you know, Kayla Harrison wasn't having it a second time because Kayla Harrison grabbed her, put in a clinch, and took her back down again. So... Kayla Harrison was determined to not let this girl out the first round, and she did just that. Charnowski held on for as long as she could, but, you know, <clears throat> she was face down. 
and Kayla Harrison was was, was whooping her ass. I'm talking about hitting her on the side of the head with punches. I'm talking about man trying to submit her. She couldn't submit her. And then Kayla Harrison, you know, just started beating up some more. I mean, this was this was pretty much a first a first round. It, it, it was an ass. I just had a comment. That's what this was, okay? Um, Charnowski just, she just didn't have the skill set, man. She didn't have the tools to deal with Kayla. There's not many of them that do or will. She just don't, man. It's, it's, you'll see, man. I think when Kayla. Brittany Elkins, Jose Cotton, Sharnaski, we can start going to the UFC. Megan Anderson, Yana Kunitskaya. I mean, come on. When she actually faces the more skillful fighters, we'll see, you know, just how far along she comes, okay? We'll see. I still don't think Kayla's ready for any big time comp yet, but I think she's on her way. I think she's on her way. But I would have loved for her to fight another fighter, you know, with another, with a, with a bit more skill set. We would love to see her fight Amanda Nunes tomorrow. That would really slow her down. Just to see, you know. And I would have loved to see her try to test her striking. Because when she said she was going to do it, I was like, okay, well, let's see, you know, how far along she's coming in the striking department. You know, like uh, or her stand-up. I'm sorry, she said she was going to test her stand-up. And I, I kind of wanted to see her just take her time and throw some strikes and really, you know, let me see, like, how the rest of her game is developed. Just for anybody wondering... Check out the Josette Cotton fight in the beginning of that. She was throwing some strikes, and that was an earlier fight. Head kicks, outside leg kicks, body punches, head movement. You can see all of that in her second pro fight. But maybe we'll see it next time because, you know, you or I, we're not in there, okay? We're not in the octagon. Kayla Harrison's in there, and, you know, one wrong move, and you can be out. So, you know, salute to Kayla. She did her thing. I'm going to tell you, I like PFL. I like PFL. Now, you guys right now, you don't see a lot of the women right now. It's, it's not a whole lot of women right now. But the PFL, they're going to invest in a 155-pound division, and that's because of Kayla Harrison. And, you know, I've been <clears> saying for years that the UFC, they need to actually, you know, get these big women, get the big women in there, man. I'm pro big women. One five, 145 and above, they need to be able to fight. Okay, they Fuck, need I'm to be able to have Matt. a home, man. And I'm the pro PFL, I, I ride, I support women. PFL. I will support them because they're giving the, the Amazon-type women, women, small women a chance to, to, women. to make a what living, a man? chance to eat. They're giving them a chance, man. And they're going to be and next year, man, they're rolling this out. Kayla Harrison said they're rolling it out, yeah, and they're, they're, yeah, they they're going to give her top-level competition. So maybe some of these people that can't get signed by the UFC, man, maybe some of these people that struggle making 145, this would be perfect for them, man. And, you know, from what I'm hearing, too, about how the PFL pay, the pay is not that bad, you know. The pay is doable. So, I mean, you know, shout out to the PFL, man. Shout out to the PFL for actually taking a taking a chance and, you know, actually, you know, looking at some of the skill set of some of these women. And I hope they get everybody they can. I hope they get everybody they can. I hope the Zerafino Santos get here. I hope the Zolia Frostos come. I hope they can get everybody and their mama in here. Because the UFC, man, they messing up, man. But shout out to the PFL. Congrats to Kayla Harrison on a first-round knockout victory of Muriel Chanoski. This is your boy, Coach Shelton Harris. Oh, I think I should have got a shout-out in that video. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think I should have got a shout-out in that one. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. All right, guys, we got the heavyweight fight coming up. Who you got? Felipe Lynch, Josh Copeland in the chat. But... Salute to the coach. Make sure you subscribe over there if you haven't. A little too soon to talk about the cyborg knockout, though. That's not where you want to talk about that if you don't want Ben. But Kayla Harrison, make sure y'all let him know she's the future. Quincy Padola says, Godly needs to sleep this dude. Let's scroll down a little behind. MMA Buds in the building. What's going on, MMA Buds? Make sure you guys check out MMA Buzz. He live streams the prelims to all the fights, the KSWs, even the prelims to the UFCs, the Bella Tours. I mean, MMA Buzz, he's on it. And that's Dan from Oregon, if you guys didn't know. He's also very knowledgeable about the sport. Kim Murphy says, she done a shit job getting boxed around. Who you got? I'll go with Copeland. Hopefully he can cope well. I <laughs> see what you did there. <laughs> I'll go with Felipe Lenz. Hopefully he can land a big one. <laughs> Give it training is true. I finally got my medical stuff approved and bought some moon rocks. Oh shit.
Give a trace how super stoked, but I could have sworn I saw her say, oh, no, in between a few of those shots. You know, I want to rewatch that fight, too, in slow-mo. I don't know why, just because it was so so much of a shock and it was so short. Like, you know, that sequence, I haven't seen it yet, but, yeah, it, it's crazy. That shit's still crazy. It's a crazy way to end 2019. I didn't expect we were going to end 2019 like this. 2018. I didn't expect we were going to end 2018 Cyborg getting knocked out, Kayla Harrison dominating. Oh, shit. 2020, bad. 2020. Who you guys got in this fight? Felipe Liz, Josh Copeland. Let me make sure you guys can't hear these fights before I unmute them. They're in the cage. Winner of this fight gets a million dollars. Heavyweight title will be he PFL's heavyweight champion. Brasilia, 13 3 professional record. Felipe Lins, 18-5-1, Copeland. I got Felipe Lins, fuck it. I don't I don't think I've watched either any of their fights, honestly, but I got Felipe Lins. Dan Mergliata in charge of the action. I'm going with Felipe Lins. Yeah, I didn't see that. Oh, well, Jowder. Here we go. Red fight, red fight. Sitting in the octagon. Both these guys are coming forward. That usually leads to fireworks. Oh, coming forward. Both of them sitting in the octagon. Fainting. Copeland switching. Oh, coming forward with the lead left hook. These guys are coming forward. Just Josh Copeland comes forward with the lead right hook. Might have ate, ate a shot in return. Felipe Lins putting out that jab real quick. Outside leg kick from Felipe for Felipe Lins. Nice right hook there from Felipe Lins over the top. Man, I just have a feeling somebody's about to be going to sleep in this fight because they're both coming forward in the center of the octagon. Nobody's really playing on their back foot. Both these guys are throwing big shots when they throw. <coughs> Josh Copeland in the center of the octagon right now, looking to try and find his way forward. But Felipe... Lynn's doing a good job of using his jab to keep him at bay. Felipe Lynn's nice little jab. What up? Shit, seeing if you got a stick for a nigga who took a big hit from Anthony Davis tonight. I got two, yeah, you could have one. Okay. That's crazy. I think I only had him in one on Westbrook, Georgia, one, and then my main lineup was winning in the Xbox League, bro. Just everything just went to shit with that. Mm. Luckily, I won five or six bucks earlier though today for my early game, so I have something tomorrow. Uh huh. Oh, big hook from Felipe Hens. Looks like he just missed Josh Copeland. Nice jab from Felipe Lins. <clears throat> Ooh, that, that right hook from Felipe Lins. Looks like he might have countered Josh Copeland there. Outside leg kick from Copeland there, a big left hook. Leg kick might have hit the shin though. Good jab from Copeland there. Oh, big right hand from Copeland, right hook. Oh, Copeland coming in with the jab, almost got tagged over the top. Official scorecards, Copeland has landed 14 more significant strikes than Lynn. Little jab from Copeland. Mm. 
Mm. Nice little right left hook combination from Felipe Lenz. <clears throat> Felipe Lenz really controlling the center of the octagon right now. Ooh, left hand coming in from Copeland. Nice left hand. Ooh, right hook, left hook from Felipe Lynn. Good head movement. Getting out of the way of the jab for Copeland. Feeling each other out. Good jab from Lynn's. Left hook over right hook over the top from Josh Copeland. Ooh. Nice body shot from Felipe Lynn's uppercut. Copeland pumping out that right jab. Center of the octagon trying to come forward, missing on the left. 30 seconds left in round one. Ooh, right hand. Left hook from Felipe Lenz. Outside leg kick from Felipe Lenz, but he eats a jab. Lenz a nice right uppercut, though. <clears throat> Ten second warning in the first round. Nice jab from Felipe Lynch to end the round. Round one is in the books. Going into the corner. Round two of the heavyweight fight. Fight clock off the screen till round two starts. And Josh Copeland, Felipe Lins, winner of this fight's the inaugural heavyweight champion at PFL and wins a million dollars. Here we go, round two is about to be underway. Fight clock, second round, ready to fight. Boom. <clears throat> nice jab to start the round from Josh Copeland. Trade jabs there. Ooh, <clears throat> left. <clears throat> Left hook from Felipe Lenz lands there. Josh Copeland coming forward, winging a big right hand, <clears throat> eating big flurry of punches. <clears throat> Return from Felipe Lenz. Looked like they were blocked, but still good shots from Felipe Lenz. Good combinations. Now Josh Copeland looking to come forward. Left hook landed from Felipe Lenz. Right uppercut. Ooh, these guys are throwing hooks at each other now. Good. Looks like Josh Copeland landed with a nice uppercut, but Felipe Lynch might have landed two on the return. Right, left. Outside leg kick from Felipe Lynch. Jab from Josh Copeland. Coming forward, left jab. Coming forward now with the right hand. Nice left jab there, Lynch, from Felipe Lynch. Three minutes and 41 seconds left in round two. They tie up for a second in the clinch, break away. Josh Copeland coming forward with that left hand, gets to grab his head, clinched up. Felipe Lynch ducks out of the clinch.
Felipe Lynch in the center of the octagon. That's a nice uppercut there and a right hook. Left hook, right uppercut. Josh Copeland looks like he has a little bit of a cut under his right eye. Coming forward, just misses on the right hook. Oh, left hook lands from Felipe Lynch. Left jab. Outside leg kick from Felipe Lenz. Josh Copeland switches stances. Lands an inside leg kick of his own. Two minutes to go left in the second round. Josh Copeland coming forward, lands a hook, misses the next. Oh, <clears throat> right hook lands from Felipe Lenz. Ooh, body kick lands from Felipe Lenz. Left hand coming forward from Josh Copeland. Right hook just missed. That would have did some damage from Copeland. Nice counter right from Jot from Felipe Lenz there and an outside leg kick. Felipe Lenz evening up the strikes. <clears throat> Second round, minute left. Five round fight. Ooh, outside leg kick and a left hook landed from Felipe Lenz. He has some quick hands there. Josh Copeland's calf's already bruised. Ooh, now Felipe Lenz has a nice right hand after an outside leg kick. Left hook to the chin. Josh Copeland's got a fucking pretty strong chin. Ooh, nice combination from Felipe Lynn's right hand left uppercut. Outside leg kick drops Josh Copeland. Now he takes the side control. Now half guard. Trying to land some shots over the top. Trying to land some ground and pound. <clears throat> He's trying to put some pressure on him. Only five seconds left. They're telling him. Don't don't tire yourself out. Only five seconds left. <clears throat> End of the second round. Good end from Felipe Lenz. Fight clock off the screen. Copeland's losing this fight, says Cam Murphy. Happy New Year, given the sure name says. Yo, full time is wishing you guys a happy New Year's. Happy New Year's to you as well, Pyrotechniques. Copeland doing all right, but Lenz is backing away, making him chase him, says Cam Murphy. Copeland blocking shots with an enormous head, with his enormous hands. That's given your sure name. Yeah, round two. I think that was a good round for Lynch. He closed the distance a little bit if the first round was close. I agree. Corners right now preparing for round three. <clears throat> Here we go. I'm ready. Round three of five. Heavyweight title fight. Winner gets a million bucks. Becomes PFL's heavyweight champ. Oh, starting off with a nice right hook from Felipe Lins. Ooh, right hand from Josh Copeland. Ooh, left kick to the body. Another right hand from Lins. Left hook from Lins. So there's sweat on the mat. It's slippery. He almost slipped. 
Oh, big combination from Felipe Lenz. Left hook, right hook, grabs him with his head, lands a couple knees, but he landed another right hook. Felipe Lenz just did some damage to Josh Copeland. Josh Copeland's got a hell of a chin. Outside leg kick, left hook, right hook from Felipe Lenz. Josh Copeland's coming forward like a zombie. Like this shit's not even hitting him. Now they're clinched up. Lynch pushes away. Left hook from Felipe Lynch. Let me right un uppercut. Left jab. Outside leg kick from Lynch. Big right hand from Felipe Lynch. Josh Copeland is eating these shots. Right hand, left jab, uppercut. Right. Uh, he's just fucking cracking Josh Copeland. Chin. He's barely standing still. I mean, he's still standing. Like. But he's zombied up, getting outside leg kick, left shot. He's just teeing off on Josh Copeland. Headbutt from Felipe Lenz. He's trying to tell the ref. Felipe Lenz got a headbutt from a clash of heads. The ref's telling him to fight. Lenz is trying to tell him, dude, I need to get my head checked. I just got to be just clashed heads. Three minutes left. Now, Felipe Lins bleeding over his eyes. It's going to affect his vision from a head cut, a headbutt. But he's just been teeing off on Josh Copeland. He's just coming forward. This dude is a zombie. Just tough as nails. He's like Roy Nelson esque. <laughs> Lins, they're in a clinch right now. Lins needs a knee to the body. Right hook, right hook, man, fucking just cracking Josh Copeland. This dude, chin of steel, just taking shots. Right hand. Holy fuck. This dude is a sock em, rock em, sock em robot right now. Knee to the body, clinch, knee to the head, left hand, right hand, right hand, right hand from Felipe Lenz. Holy shit. He better not punch himself out, man. This dude's taking a lot of damage, and he's still here. Knees to the body, knees to the body. Big knees to the body. He's got Josh Copeland trying to block those. <clears throat> yeah, Felipe Lins has just been beating the shit out of Josh Copeland up to this point. This round, <clears throat> last round, uppercuts. Just just punching Copeland. Just, Copeland just still standing. Man, this is like Roy Nelson type shit right here. Darren Elkins esque. <clears throat> Shots to the body from Felipe Lenz in the clinch. Uppercut from Copeland. Uppercut from Lenz. Shots to the body. A minute left. Knees from Lenz. Knees from Lenz in the, to the body. Copeland with the right hook over the top. <clears throat> this dude's still coming forward. This dude's got to have metal in his head. <clears throat> Leap Lens outside leg kick. Big shot to the chin of Copeland. Holy fuck. He's teeing off on this dude, and he's just coming forward, man. This has got to be wild if you're Felipe Lens. You're hitting it with everything you've got on the button, and he's just walking forward. <clears throat> I don't know. That's crazy. Hitting, hitting him with everything you got. He's still not going out. Knees to the body. Knees to the body in the clinch here from Felipe Lins. <clears throat> Copeland still in the clinch. Still fighting. That's crazy. <clears throat> this is tough as fuck. Josh Copeland back to the fence, working for underhooks. <clears throat> End of the round three. Felipe Lins <clears throat> got the headbutt. He was still talking about it after the round. <clears throat> and that could affect his vision. That would be crazy. Josh Copeland is in this thing like he's fighting for a million dollars. <laughs> this is looking like a title fight. <clears throat> F 
Felipe Lynch just needs to try and keep it going. I can't believe how many shots he's landed on the chin, hooks to the body. This is wild. Felipe Lynch was cut by a clash of heads. I'm talking to him, world champion, life changing, my brother. Life changing money right here. Justin Copeland has been getting cleaned. That's we'll see what happens, man. Round three. Chin of steel. I'm bringing the doctor in to check out the cut over Felipe Lenz. Alright, doctor said both fighters are cleared to fight. Doctors checked both of them. <laughs> Felipe Lins walked out and touched gloves. But he's like, man, I don't know what the hell I got to do to finish this guy. Right hand for Felipe Lins to start it off. Left kick to the body. Big right hand. Josh Copeland, he looks tired. Oh, fucking huge right hand from Felipe Lins. Knees to the body. Knees clinched up with knees. Muay Thai clinch. He's just going to work with the knees in the clinch. Big right hand. Okay, he stopped the fight. Oh, yeah, that was a referee stoppage. Good stoppage. He was fucking whooping ass. Holy shit. Man. That was a fucking... Whoo. Only reason he's cut is because that head, but he was fucking teeing off on that dude. Round one was a little close, but after that, Felipe Lins, man, took over. <clears throat> Holy f smokes. Referee stopped the fight. McCann Murphy says, what the fuck is Copeland doing? Fucking injured, lost. <laughs> Damn, because he lost. Lenz is pissed about the head, but huge cut on his eyes is giving shit. Yeah, he was pissed about that. Ref came. But it's like, even when the doctor comes in, it's like, what do you want him to do? Stop the fight? Take a point or something, I guess. Copeland says, uh, give insurance says Copeland's getting pulverized. Oh, yeah. He I was getting fucking cleaned up. Copeland copes well with punishment. <laughs> Just give it share name. Yeah, he definitely does. Definitely does. <laughs> this beer's gone. I gotta go grab another one. I think there's only like three, so before they're all gone. Commercial break. I'll be right back. I'm back. Give it a shirt name. Said he went with the Homer Simpson approach. That's what that was. That's that's a good. That's what that looked like. That was definitely some Homer Simpson. I mean, as far as at the end, Felipe Lins was just teeing off. <laughs> oh shit. Copeland, you gonna be sore tomorrow? Hey, it's the fight game. That's some tough shit. Heavyweight champion, million dollar winner. One more fight of the night. 
we got the welterweights, Ray Cooper the third, Magomed, Magomed Karimo fighting. They said less than 90 minutes to go in 2018, not where I'm at. But that's Eastern time, and that's really where most people celebrate. I still got two and a half hours. <clears throat> Winner by TKO, winner $1 million, and being crowned as the PFL heavyweight champion of the world. Felipe Costa Lens. There we go. All right, we got to play a song, UFC Yankovic ship segment, something in the meantime, in between time. Uh oh. Y'all know what time it is. Oh. It's time for the simp segment. Well, you know, we could be listening to the post fight speech right now. We could be. Listening to the translator, we know what happened. Felipe Lins winning the fight. Sock em, bop em, bop em robots and shit. TKO. Danny Phoenix. Bad as can be. Quay Venha. 2019. Happy New Year's. Ashley Evans, MMA. Top 9 of 2018. Looks like you deviants like me best when I'm either punching or posing. Felice Herrick getting in fight shape. Says so she's getting a little cauliflower here. She says she thinks it's sexy though. Pearl Gonzalez over there running shit in Invicta. After a short stint in the UFC, celebrating Christmas in a major way. Tatiana Suarez, potentially, well, she for definitely future strawweight title challenger. All right, guys. Simp segment coming to an end. We got another commercial break. We got one more fight tonight. Andrea KGB Lee. We're going to play a couple songs from UFC Yankovic before this last fight. Andrea KGB Lee, you know her man is not happy about this. Be careful. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Andre KGB Lee or Andre K K K Lee. I think this will. Do you think this will distract the simps from the Nazism? <laughs> Cause I'm distracted. I'm distracted. Paige Van Zant and what is his name? Mr. Van something Van Austin Vanderford. I think he got signed by. I forgot who he got signed by PFL. Here we go. It's about time, guys. All right, let's go to UFC. Yankovic. Kazingano's eye. That's from the toe. UFC Yankovic. This is Sean O'Malley, and you're watching full time. All right. Full time, you have to put some men in it. The men are on the side. And there was Austin Vanderford. There are men in it. See, look. See, you got Luke Rockhold, Paulo Costa. And you just seen Austin Vanderford. You know? 
I don't know if I can do it. I can't just like I I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but that but yeah, that's why they're on the side. <laughs> What are we about to listen to? Let's see. We got some lightweights fighting PFL. No welterweights. All right. Time, Woodley. I'll beat your ass challenge. First, I got to mute the fights. Mute the commercials. Unmute. Best what's waiting in the world. I'll beat him like a black belt. If a nigga fuck with me, then he assed out. I'ma sit his ass down. Back against the wall, then I max out. If you want smoke, I'm a gas cloud. No time for you class clowns, cause my bitch got her ass out. And she wiggling and wobbling and she moving and she shaking it for me. And now these niggas getting mad now. Probably cause they salty and they jealous cause they really ain't been making no money. Hold up. Let me go on and switch my flow up. That's why everybody know us. Cause we throw them from the shoulders like some motherfucking soldiers And I thought we fucking told ya We ain't choose this life, it chose us We do you like a pipe and smoke ya Pause I don't wanna talk, I just wanna break your jaw I'll beat your ass, I'll beat your ass Tyron Woodley, I'll beat your ass Y'all listen to Time Willie's mixtape yet? I haven't got around to it either. But one of these days, I plan on it. It's on the bucket list. <laughs> we got next the main event. Ray Cooper the third versus Magomed Magomed Kerry Move. It's going to be the last million-dollar title fight of the night. Happy New Year's to everybody that hasn't already heard it. Um... Yeah, it's going to be the last fight tonight, guys. Oh, man. Yes, we got to get the details. Let me see where the fights are at. We got to get the details for UFC Wichita. It's going to be our first ever, possibly only. I don't know. I don't know the next time I'm going to be going to a fight. I don't know the next time there's going to be a fight this close to me, especially a UFC fight. But UFC Wichita, I'm going. I'm, there's no way I'm not going to that. UFC's going to the city I was born and raised in, the closest one that will ever be to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't care who the main event is. I don't care who the co-main event is. I'm going to be in that motherfucker like swimwear. UFC coming to Wichita. Here are some details for the event. Oh, shit, son. All right, let's see some of the details for the event. Um, First fights on the cards will be announced soon. When's the date? Tickets go on sale January 19th. Man, I ain't going to be able to afford them by January 19th. But I'm going to the event, even if I got to scalp them at the motherfucking door, even though I don't know if they're going to sell out. I don't know. But I'm going. I don't give up. I've never been to one. What? UFC is coming to Wichita, guys. I'm going to that. If you guys want to go to that, we can meet up, drink some beers, go watch the fights. It'll be fun. Let me see if like, it's on UFC's Wikipedia. UFC event schedule. I want to see the date they're actually coming. Alright, let's see. Okay, right here, right here. March 9th. Holy shit, my birthday's in March. And my girl's birthday's in March. This is like 21 days before my birthday. It couldn't have been better timing. All right, man. You guys know the clothes. You, I mean, you guys know the goal. You guys know the goal. I'm going to UFC Wichita. Now, it's about time for the main event of PFL. 
Ray Cooper the third taking a Muggle Med, Muggle Med, Carry Move. Ray Cooper the third to Beast for Source, Muggle Med, Muggle Med, Carry Move. 27 pro fights, 22 and 5. He's got a Khabib sounding last name. You know he's a beast. Ray Cooper the third, though. 4 0 as well. Whoever wins this fight, it's a 1 million dollars and becomes PFL's welterweight champion. Ray Cooper's in the ring being announced. Fight's going to be starting soon. Got a lot of support. Ray Cooper the third. In the crowd. When tickets go on sale, let a nigga know. I'm sure cats like me and John Doe will show a little love. Bet. Bet they go on sale. I think it's in January. But hell yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. I want. I would like to try and go um, live. I'm going to Wichita. A seven army couldn't hold me back. LMA on Jack White. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's going to be fucking awesome. I would like to. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be able to stream from the event, maybe. Um, I got like this cheap microphone on Amazon for like 10 bucks and it didn't work on my computer but it might work for my phone and if so it might help with the sound issues so maybe I can stream from my phone I got like I got like two of them portable phone chargers so I can stream from my phone hopefully there's no sound issues so that'd be dope Cam Murphy says I like your version better than his his is easy as fuck I know, man, I wasn't a finalist for the tournament, though. You know what I'm saying? But I do I do like the song, though. The Sims are fine with Nazism full-time. It means they don't have fear of getting cucked by some monster man dingo. <laughs> full-time, you have to put some... Oh, I already read that. All right, here we go. They're announcing the fights now. I'm only two hours... It's only a two-hour drive from this. Just giving sure name. I'm going. I'm going. I can't fuck... I... I didn't need, I didn't even think they were, would ever go there. I'm going. 100%. It's not even a question. I don't give a fuck if I got to sell my... Never mind. I was going to make a joke. and send my butt on the back page, but pause. <laughs> Main event of PFL. Final fight of 2018, we're going to be watching together, full-time family. It's been a fucking awesome year. You guys rock. Full-time family fucking rocks. Fucking a lot of crazy times in MMA. Crazy into the year. Crazy upcoming fights. I mean, we got trades and shit happening. There's never been more competition as far as other organizations. Legit MMA to watch. UFC. Just everything. A lot of, you know, it's a good time right now. So, thank you guys for coming through to this stream. This is the last one we're watching, man. Last fight we're going to be watching together. Welterweight title fight. Winner gets a million dollars. Ray Cooper the third versus Mago Medcare Mo. My ass. I on back page. Ain't nobody going to buy that mess full time. Be surprised. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Team Beige. Team Beige. <laughs> Pause. Todd Anderson, referee. Five minute rounds. Five five minute rounds. No knees to the head to ground an opponent. Of course, no elbows anywhere, anytime. Wild that we saw that spinning elbow earlier. Lucky he missed. Here we go. Fight clock. Refight, refight. Final title on the line. Ray Cooper coming straight out, throwing bombs. Oh, Michael Maker mobile in on a single leg attempt. Gets the takedown. Now he's fucking sinking in. Already sinking in the hooks. He has Ray Cooper's back. Landed some ground and pound with the hooks locked in already. Ray Cooper is in a bad position right now. Mago Man Karimov is on his back like a backpack. Both hooks locked in. And he's trying to land some shots here. Landing shots over the top. Ray Cooper was coming with the fast pace. A lot of aggression. So now he's in against the fence. Got backpack. 
on him of Magomed Magomed Karimov. Landed some shots, got both hooks in. Ray Cooper the third keeping his chin down. Flattened out now. Uh oh. Magomed Karimov landed some shots after he flattened Ray Cooper the third out. Landed some good ground and pound. Looking for the chin. Real close to getting it under the chin. It's not quite there, but it's close. Ray Cooper the third's fighting it off. Uh oh. It's getting pretty deep right now. It's more of a neck crank, but oh shit, it's getting deeper, it looks like. Ray Cooper fighting the hands. He's able to get the choke off of his neck. But it's still got Michael McCarmove on his back and gets one hook out. Oh, he's in a way better position now that he doesn't have him on his back. Not getting choked out. Ray Cooper the third might be able to stand up against the fence potentially. Oh, he's standing up and got an overhook now with his back against the fence. Ray Cooper the third's back up. Magomed Karimov now looking for a potential single against the fence. Ray Cooper has double underhooks with his back against the fence. Inside knee to the thigh from Magomed Karimov in the clinch. Two forty-five left in the first round. Ray Cooper tries to reverse the clinch, almost gets tripped. Still stays up, has underhooks in the clinch. Knees from Magomed Karimo, who now controls the clinch against the fence. Nice punch to the body from Magomed. Knee to the thigh. Oh, Ray Cooper throws him down, reversing the clinch. Now they're back to the feet. Good jab from Magomed Karimo. Misses on the right hand. Ray Cooper coming forward. Michael McCarrie move tying him up with the jab or with the clinch, pu pushing him against the fence. Nice, he lands a knee to the inside. Another knee. And drops down for a potential double. Unsuccessful. Ray Cooper grabs an underhook. Nice knee on the inside from Ray Cooper to the body. Knee to the body return from Michael McCarrie move there. Battling in the clinch here. Knee to the thigh from Michael McCarrie move. Right, Cooper, back to the fence. Michael McCarrie move, reaching for a single, unsuccessful. Ray Cooper the third. Got an underhook still working with his back to the fence. Mago mid carry mob man working this clinch. Knee to the thigh. Oh, nice knee to the body. Ray Cooper coming forward now. Oh, left right hook over the top from Michael Medicare MO. Ray Cooper coming forward now. That aggression. Oh, Ray Cooper in on a standing guillotine attempt. Tries to land a standing knee. Oh, Muay Thai knee to the face of Ray Cooper the third. Nice one from Michael Medicare MO. Clinches up with Ray Cooper and feeds him a couple knees. Ten seconds to go in round one. Big right hand landed from Michael Med Carabove right on the chin of Ray Cooper. Good jab from Michael Med to end the round. Whew. It was a good round. I think Michael Med Carabove got that one for sure. God dog just damn it, MC. <laughs> Four more rounds of this last fight of the year.
in the corners. Here we go. Cooper, 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 the crowd chants. Oh, left hook to start from Rick Cooper the third. Nice left hook there. Front kicks from Michael Medkarimov to try and keep the distance from, uh, from Ray Cooper, who's pressing forward. Oh, nice right hand from Michael Medkarimov coming in. Almost clash heads, it feels like, though. Ray Cooper stalking Michael Medkarimov, looking for that big shot. Like he just missed on a big right. He's looking for that one one shot. Outside leg kick from Michael Med carry him off. And Mark Cooper the third coming forward. Lands a nice left hook to the body. Ooh, nice right hook in the clinch from Ray Cooper the third. Michael Med carry him off, puts his back to the fence. Ray Cooper works for under hooks in the clinch. Back to the fence. Oh, nice right hook, left hook, and then clinch from Ray Cooper. Backs Michael Med Karimov up. Oh, nice shot from Ray Cooper there. He's coming forward, looking to land that right shot, that big right hand. Land a nice left hook to the body. Oh, nice little inside one two from Michael Med Karimov, real fast. Michael McCarimo circling on the outside. Ray Cooper coming in, landing a big left hook in a right hand that turned Michael McCarimo's head. Now he's in on a single leg attempt. Ray Cooper the third is. Lands a left hook in the clinch. Michael McCarimo throws Ray Cooper down in the clinch and he jumps, pulls a guillotine. Oh, he got the tap! Holy shit! Wow! Made one quick mistake and he was out like a light, like a light, like a light. Slept through the fight. Slept in the fight. Oh, that's a remix, you guys. Out like a light, like a light. Slept in the fight. <laughs> no, but seriously, holy shit. He jumped, pulled fucking guillotine, and he hit that motherfucker. Ray Cooper the third couldn't get out. Oh, million dollar mistake. Michael May carry move. My PFL Wolf Weight Champion wins a million dollars. Oh shit, dude. I didn't see that coming right then. But alright guys, man. Happy New Year to everybody. That was it. We'll be back for the next UFC event. I mean, of course, we're going to have live shows in between them. But as far as fight companions are concerned, TJ Dillashaw.